like to uh, call a meeting to, or to uh, order. So uh, could we do a roll call, please? Um, and I, I guess I'll uh, Jerry Braun. Oh, here. Uh, Olaf Bystrom. I am here. Welcome, Olaf. Uh, Linda Dios is absent. Jacques Franco is absent. Uh, Lorenzo Christoph. Here. Elaine Roberts Musser. Here. Giannis Trost here. And Matt Williams. Okay. Um, I would like to, before we go any further, I'd like to um, change the agenda. Um, I would like to make item 6A, actually 6B, and move 6B up. Um, both Matt and Stan had talked about this and sent me a note saying, you know, would you mind if we change the agenda? And I missed that and did not get back to them. So uh, I'm going to change the agenda back to what they had agreed to as I had also, but I just didn't see it in time to respond. So uh, if you will all make that adjustment in your agendas, I would appreciate it. Uh, what, what was it, B is first? B is first, okay. followed by uh, Matt's, Matt's uh, uh, um, agenda item, historical right. bill averaging. And then, uh, then we'll get into the wa uh, water cost of study, water cost, of uh, cost of service study. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. fine. Thanks. Yep. Okay. All approve. Uh, 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 all in favor of approving the agenda as as modified. Who moved? Do I have a second? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Who moved? <laughs> I don't think Wait. anybody made a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. As oh, I'm sorry. I thought. Thank, Thank you, you, Elaine. Thank you, Elaine. Very second. I'll second that. This is Olaf. Thank you, Olaf. Okay. Uh, are there any objections? Unanimously approved. Thank you. Okay. Brief announcements from staff, commissioners, and liaisons. I I have no announcements this evening. Yeah, I have uh, uh, a couple, three. Let's see, three articles. Yeah, three articles. Uh, let's see. One is the priorities for California water. The second one is new laws addressing water affordability and wildfire risk. And I forget what the third one is. Maybe it was only the two. I guess it was just two, two articles. So I'll send them to Adrian to pass along. And I also have an article, but I'd like to run it by uh, Adrian and uh, Stan if I could. Um, what I did is I put together some resources around SB 1383. Um, it's some work that I had to do for another project that I'm working with. So um, I'd like to run it by both of you if it's okay and have a look at it. And um, if it makes sense to you, let's just get it out there. But it's links to the legislation, to the most current um, uh, regulations that were just uh, released in October 2020. Uh, there's some really good videos about what it is, uh, you know, what it means for communities uh, that I thought would be really helpful. But uh, I'd, I'd like, if it's okay, if you just take a minute, Stan and Adrian to say, you know, yeah, this, this is okay, or, you know, make any suggestions, I'd appreciate it before it goes out. Sure, that'd be great. Thank you for sending it. And um, yep. those regulations were finalized and are now complete. So yep. we have we have the regulations at last. Yep. Is that the one that was released in October 2020, correct? They've gone to O L O O A L. Is that what it's called? Is that what office? So they, they were sent up in October and, and they were finalized, I believe, last week. Okay. Uh, maybe you can add a better link than I've got then. Sure. Um, we're, we're planning on having an update um, on our progress related to 1383 very soon. Um, and obviously that would be shared with this commission. So not to belabor the point and talk about it too much, but um, there will be a lot more information coming your way soon. And uh, it sounds like what you put together will be very helpful in that. And you know what, feel, the mo feel modified if you want to. It's just a start. And if you got something better, send that out instead, okay? Because this was just a quick document I put together earlier today. Sounds good, thank you. Th thank you. Uh, any other, any other uh, comments or announcements that people want to make? I have one, this is Olaf. 
Um, so just to let everybody know, I think I've told most of you, but um, I will not be continuing after um, this um, December. So uh, effective 1st of January, I will be off the commission uh, with one caveat, uh, which is if there is not enough people to make quorum, I can hang on for a couple of more meetings. So until March or so, but I just thought I would let you all know. Okay. Um, I'm sorry to see you go. Yeah. Yeah, same here. Yep. You've been, what wonderful contributions you've made. How long have you been on for, Olaf? Has it been like four years? More than four years, that? Yeah, four years. Yeah, yeah. Th thank you very much for your service. You know, you've been made many great contributions. Um, be hard to see you go. Um, okay. Uh, can I ask, is this a time for public comment? Oh, I'm sorry, Jerry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I had a couple for a change. I had a couple items. Um, uh, first of all, um, something came uh, came across uh, that that I thought the, the com uh, commissioners might be interested interested in, and I really would recommend it. Um, <laughs> it's got a strange title, and I'll send it. Uh, I'll send a link. Uh, the The Municipalist Manifesto, <laughs> and. Um, it really is about, um, I think, primarily about energy democracy, but um, but a lot of specifics in terms of uh, what what is happening in some places that I think we might um, maybe in some some of some of the items, some of the thought, thoughts might might be at some point of interest to Davis, and I, I just would uh, encourage you to take a scan through it, um, and then uh, I'll send it to to Adrian. Um, the, the other thing is that um, thinking about uh, uh, just to, as a good practice that uh, if you if there's time on the December or a later um, agenda to kind of look back at the year and um, what we you know what we uh, thought went well and what we uh, what we learned and and so forth I think that would be really helpful especially. Um, you know, looking ahead to um, you know, you know, electing new officers and so forth. Uh, so I put a few notes on you know, notes together, uh, shared them with Jan, and I, I'll also um, send that along to Adrian to send out. And you know, maybe it could go out with the next uh, agenda package if there's time for a discussion on the next at the next meeting. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks, Jerry. Yep. Any other uh, comments or uh, things that people want to share related to our commission? Okay, uh, that's time then for public comment. Uh, at this time, any member of the, did somebody raise hand? Sorry, somebody has a, um, I see we, well, at this time, any member of the public may address the commission on matters which are not listed on the agenda or are listed on the consent calendar. Um, do we have any uh, people who are interested in speaking at this point, Adrian or we, Stan? We have one member of the public, not sure if he'd like to chat or not, I, at least on this item. I'm not seeing a raised hand at this point. I, okay. Um, okay. Um, I, I think we're probably good to go forward. Okay, sounds good. Then I'll close public comment. Um, moving into the consent calendar, uh, if you'll take a look at the documents, and I'm sure you've read them already, but um, is there any items on consent that anyone would like to pull? Yes, Jerry. Yeah, I'd just like to um, just pull the minutes briefly. I've got a couple thoughts on them that, um, and not to change anything, but, um, but I'd like to be able to do that either be, um, you know, if we, you know, if we could do it now, if you want. Um, I'm not sure what the protocol is for that. Uh, Adrian or Stan, do yep. we pull the item and then bring it up as the first item? Yeah, so, if you'd like, if, if yeah. that's the only one you'd like to pull and then, and then you could basically approve the rest and then we could chat about the first one and then you could okay. yeah, presumably that, approve that as well and then we move on. That sounds fine. Okay, Elaine, you okay with that, Lorenzo? Yep. Everybody good? Okay. So uh, we'll pull item A, UC draft minute, uh, meeting minutes. Uh, 
Do I motion to accept um, the consent calendar for items B, C, and D? So moved. Health, yes? So moved. Moved by uh, Member uh, Musa Roberts. Do I have a second? So off, um, second. Second by Olaf Bistrom. Okay, Is, are anybody opposed to the motion? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, um, thank you. So let's move on to um, the first item, which is now the consent, uh, uh, on the consent calendar item A, a UC draft minute uh, meeting minutes, uh, Jerry. Yeah. Did you wanna share? I think you have Sorry, I, um, I understood that Jerry didn't necessarily want to make changes, but if you would like me to go ahead and share the minutes, I'm, I can do that. No, it's up. Jer Jerry, you, you have the floor. I, I don't think, no, there's no need to, to, to share the minutes. Um, I just have a couple, a couple of suggestions uh, kind of for the future uh, it, related to the minutes. Um, as usual, um, you know, <laughs> I always heap praises on on the minutes, uh, they're very good. Um, one thing, uh, one thing that occurred to me though is that um, we did have one um, split vote um, uh, at the last meeting on one of the agenda items, and we spent a long time on that item. And I, it, I think sometimes it, it, it's good practice to identify, you know, even identify when there are uh, different, <laughs> when there is a, um, somebody that has a um, disagreement with uh, the emotion to, to explain that uh, for the benefit of the city council. Uh, and I think if I remember correctly, it was Olaf who, um, you know, we had a significant discussion of his concerns and I think they, you know, should be really captured in the minutes, uh, so that so that the city council knows what 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 the the, the no vote was about. Um, but the, I don't see a need to um, change the minutes at this point. But but uh, in this particular case, but in the future, I think it would be a good idea idea to do that. So. And if I can just chime in on that, um, thank you, Jerry, for bringing that up. I, I agree. I think that's that's what should be in there. I had a quick scan only of the minutes and noted that the votes were correctly uh, reflected in there. But otherwise, I haven't read the details of, of that discussion. So if that's your takeaway, I, I think that is um, something that that should be reflected in there because, yeah, yeah okay. it's important. Jerry, if I may um, ask a quick question. Sure. Um, for So we do have the sort of summary of, of what Olaf um, was talking about um, in his disagreement with the motion that the commission made that's included sort of on pages four and five. Um, it's a bullet point that's sort of yeah. broken up by the page split there. Are you saying that you would prefer that information be included closer to the motion? And with some kind of indication that the person, you know, the, the argument against the motion was as follows? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Perfect. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that would be really helpful. Um, and then the other thing that um, I looked at the long term cal long range calendar and realized that, um, you know, we're not scheduled to come back to um, the um, stormwater uh, matter, uh, at least in the foreseeable future on the calendar. Um, but the minutes covered a lot of ground, a lot of, um, I, I won't say unanswered questions, but partially answered questions. And it, it feels like we're kind of doing a handoff to finance and budget um, in terms of we've, you know, we've uh, made a recommendation regarding uh, revenues and, and cost recovery. Uh, and that frees up, you know, a, a discussion of you know, how to finance and how to budget for some of the things that uh, we talked about. And I just, uh, it just occurred to me that it might be a good idea to send uh, our minutes along to uh, the Finance and Budget uh, Commission, uh, kind of as a, <laughs> kind of as a, here, here's, here's where we left off and, um, and, um, and also maybe as a, maybe with the, the suggestion that we would be very interested in 
what finance and budget um, you know, does with some of the questions we wrestled with and how they come down on them um, and kind of some feedback uh, from, from their direction and having offered some input from ours. Uh, so just an idea, uh, you know, I, we, we can discuss it briefly, but that's, that's my suggestion. I, I, Jerry, I think that's a great suggestion because I've been to the Finance and Budget Commission after we've done something like this and it's clear at times they don't understand where we're coming from. So I think it would be helpful to send them the minutes, definitely. So we could, we, we'd, be, we'd be happy to send the minutes over that way to the chair to provide. However, there's a few steps before we actually can discuss how we want to fund the actual capital improvements in those things, you know, that part of the discussion. We actually yeah. have to go to council and have them actually approve our, our yeah. ability to go ask for the community to approve the revenue. So, um, but absolutely, once that's done, uh, we would be back in, you know, uh, to the FBC saying, um, you know, we have different ways, you know, it doesn't impact the rate. We have the rates in place now. Um, is there, is from a financial perspective, from their point of view, is there a better way to, um, or, or what would their recommendation be on how we would fund some capital projects depending on the, the critical nature of them, right, from a timing, so. I thought I thought it would was sort of a, a situation where we had um, you know gotten um, some some indications of, of where staff uh, how staff is thinking about um, you know debt and uh, <laughs> and and finance and and those kinds of things but uh, you know it seemed to me that um, uh, you know we hadn't made any recommendations on, on those aspects. And, you know, there was a mention in the minutes that, you know, finance and budget would be dealing with some of these questions. And so it just seemed to me that um, it'd be good for them to, to know what questions we had and, and what sure. things we, we were in agreement on, on and what we, we didn't, didn't really resolve. Sure, no, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. I just, from a timing, it, my, my only, my only, um, um, I, I think it's, yes, I think it's a, uh, absolutely, yeah. we want to provide them the information from this commission. It's just a timing factor for me. As yeah. well, I understand. Month, right, yeah. next month is not the time to do it, but uh, probably, um, you know, um, going into the second quarter of next year, hopefully when we have a vote where we've, we've got the revenue, um, you know, set up, um, then absolutely we'd want to talk to FBC about how, how best they would recommend uh, the city move forward in, in now funding some of these, whether it's debt or whether it's um, other other avenues, right? So yeah, no question. And this the 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 minutes here and the discussion you had last month certainly will be a necessary part of that to educate them on what you've done to date, right? So yeah. Yeah, I think the biggest problem I saw when I went before the FBC before is they don't seem to see the need for a reserve. <laughs> <laughs> which I, yeah, that's, that's I oh, it thing. was that's awful. Different, that's a whole different ball game, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, they just have a whole different way of thinking, thinking about I'd like, it. If it's okay, I'd like to move us along um, so that I, if people are, feel okay with where the conversation is now, can we move along? Is that okay? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Move, move to approve the minutes. Very second. I'll second, this is Lorenzo. Thank you, Lorenzo. Uh, is there anyone who uh, opposes the motion? Passes unanimously, thank you very much. Okay, let's move into uh, our regular items uh, of this. Uh, and we're now looking at, for those who are in, uh, who are listening online, we're looking into the solid waste annual fund review and rate recommendations. If you miss that, we move that up to the first item. So if you're out there listening, it is B is now A and A slides into the B position in our agenda. Stan, take it away. Uh, one second here, I need to bring up a, a slideshow here. Uh, I need to start the slideshow, that'd be a positive, okay. Um, did that just come up? That's really weird. There it is. One second. I got to reshare a different uh, presentation here. 
Uh, I believe we got it there. There we go. Uh, so there we go. You guys, we're seeing the solid waste fund update. Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. All right. So thanks for that. We, uh, you know, uh, have a little background. We have a few slides, nine slides. We'll, we'll, some of them, we'll, we'll get through them pretty quick and then hopefully have a, um, a quick discussion about what we've presented and then, um, you know, what the, what the commission feels would be appropriate moving forward. So, uh, just as background, um, you have the current approved Prop 218. Um, obviously this commission reviews those before we uh, go to uh, council for implementation. Uh, if you recall in April and May of this year, the commission recommended council approved the postponement of the June 1 of 2020 uh, increase that was 10% uh, primarily due to COVID-19 um, engagement. You look at the regular schedule, this was the originally approved uh, over here on the left. Uh, and then essentially on the right is the modified um, where we obviously scratched out the June um, and then what we're now proposing in uh, before you this evening is January, coming up in January of a, of a 12, and July of a 6, which is the 18% that was originally going to be June of last year, or this year, sorry, it's a long year, and 8% uh, and, uh, in January. So there's a total of 18 there. We are suggesting, um, based on the fund review of doing a 12 and a 6, uh, and recommending that for council action. Uh, if you notice down here, the total increase then for 21 is around $7 a month um, for the typical bill. Uh, some good news for fiscal year 1920 revenues were close to the model, a um, little bit under budget. Uh, expenditures also close to the model. Um, uh, the recology contract was below budget. Uh, debt payments were below budget as well. Uh, fund balance, uh, obviously, fund balance does continue to drop, especially since we didn't um, do the 10% increase, um, but it has slowed a bit. Um, uh, you can see those totals there um, between, the, um, uh, between the two years. Uh, so, in effect, recovering is planned. Obviously, you recall, we did the first larger increase in the beginning, which obviously slowed that uh, decrease of the fund balance over the last year or so. A little bit of the bad news, revenue uh, revenue is below budget and the model, about 40K per month. Um, this is the only utility out of all of them that we've seen a, a, what we'd call probably a significant drop in revenue um, related to uh, primarily commercial account changes. Um, obviously, with a lot of businesses closing, they reduced their uh, service or stopped it altogether. Um, so we, we did account for some of that, um, but that is the, the current uh, drop in revenue that we're seeing. Um, we did revise the budget um, as we went into this fiscal year. We did lower the revenue anticipated to uh, roughly 10%. Um, and that it does, um, but that does include the increase of a 10% in January of 21, because obviously um, that was the planned one uh, back when we were looking at the budget. Uh, and then um, essentially, you know, what staff is indicating is, and with the model, if, if we do not do these increases, uh, we certainly will see the fund balance continue to drop uh, and or potentially go negative, uh, which would necessitate uh, obviously a loan of some type. Uh, here's some impacts, uh, as I mentioned. Question, commercial question. Whoops. Lorenzo, uh, yeah. per your previous slide, are you saying that with the January 1st and the July uh, increases of next year, that we will not need uh, a loan or some other supplement to the fund? That, that is correct. That okay. is correct. Yes. Just wanted to clarify. Thanks. And is the little graphic to indicate that we still do loose in the streets collection? Yeah, that's, that's our, <laughs> our go-to slide now for solid waste. Yes. Okay. They, <laughs> yeah. we, we started using this for a number of our slides when we talk solid waste. So, yeah. <laughs> So can I ask uh, one more uh, just clarifying question there too? Uh -huh. So when you say that we'll run into potentially needing um, to borrow or, or needing a loan of some kind, when would that happen in that case? During next year or sometime in the future beyond next year? I believe, and I depending on what we do or don't do, I believe it could be as early as the end of this fiscal year. That's um, correct. Yeah, yeah, it would need to happen um, potentially very soon. Okay. 
Because yeah, and 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 that's if we get to the end of the fiscal year and any of the the funds are negative, that would necessitate a loan to make sure that we can you know continue operations. Got it. Thank you. So you're talking you're talking July 2021. Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, and then just just as a backup, uh, we talked about the commercial accounts a minute ago. Um, this actually will provide you you know the data behind that. There's about 115 commercial accounts uh, that did that. Um, as of now, uh, most of them have started at least some service, um, uh, you know, about half, a little over half, probably have full service. Um, but again, um, they're not necessarily doing the business that, you know, we were before pre-COVID for a lot of the, uh, the businesses and down, especially, you know, downtown and restaurants and those things. So um, certainly it's a, it's a uh, you know, slowly coming back, but obviously with the, the changes we're seeing in recent with the, with the, the purple, you know, going back to purple. Uh, it could could impact some of this to a degree. So, single family um, again, not not a, an appreciable impact. Uh, but again, also there is the late fee waiver that is still in effect. So they do, it's not not bill forgiveness, but we we do not charge a late fee if they choose not to pay. And uh, I believe some of that information was in the consent items as well. It was. We included the delinquency list. Uh, obviously, everybody's aware, as, as Jan mentioned earlier, Senate Bill 1383 uh, coming up. Uh, you did to update those slides. Sorry, the state yes. has uh, formally yeah. adopted the regulations. <laughs> you can see we put this together about uh, over a week ago, so we're good. Um, so, so uh, obviously, they've been they, uh, you know, the timeline doesn't change, but those they they have been formally adopted. So uh, we now know, and we can. Uh, in short order here, we'll be working with a consultant to develop an implementation plan. Uh, and that should go to, I'm almost, I'm thinking that that goes to council here um, in December. I'm thinking we're shooting for the first, Adrian, is that right? We are, yes. And that would that would go to the commission as an informational item and, and they would be involved in the discussions after that plan is established as well. Of course, correct. Uh, as so, well as the NRC, no doubt. Yeah, I was, I was just gonna say, um, I noticed that sometimes you make presentations to the NRC and then there's a gap between maybe up to three weeks before we get the same presentation. Is there any possible way that when you do that, you can alert us, if not send us the material that you're presenting to them um, that we may see probably at our next meeting if it turns out in that order? Is that making sense? No, I, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I, I don't think that'd be a difficult go. I'm, I, I don't know how many of you are, are clued into the NRC as far as, um, you know, receiving their agendas. Um, that obviously would be a suggestion, but we can, if, if there's an item of note that's coming before you, we can certainly uh, forward that agenda. That'd be fine. That would, that would be really helpful. I, I mean, I follow it, but I'm not sure anybody, I put it on my calendar for no other reason, just to see what is on their agenda. And that's when I noticed that sometimes you're making presentations. And I just think if you are able to get that information out since it's been released, it would be helpful to either send it directly to us or give us a link to that particular agenda items uh, attachments. That would be great. Sure, no worries. Thank you, um, thank you both. Um, Stan, um, yeah. going back to the COVID uh, slide, well, we don't need to go back. Um, and I, reading through your report, um, it's pretty clear that you see uh, COVID as the um, primary contingency that could, um, uh, you know, that that could, um, you know, derail the, you know, the plan, um, or at least impact uh, the possible need for further near-term rate adjustments. Um, I I still have a concern that. We, we don't have um, you know, something like more than 85% of our costs are, you know, uh, you know go to the, the hauler. And I don't, I feel like I have no, no visibility whatsoever to what waste hauler uh, costs, what, what kind of cost uh, costs they, uh, contingencies they have, um, you know, there's a lot going on in terms of uh, the, that I'm not qualified to talk about, uh, you know, in terms of uh, 
uh, recycling and, and tipping fees and all kinds of things like that, that are part of their cost structure. But it seems like there's, there's a possibility, certainly within the contract that, that um, Davis has with Recology, you know, there's a there's provision for Recology to um, request a, a you know a, 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 I don't know what you call it a price review or <laughs> what have you, um, and I just don't have any feeling at all for how likely it is that that's going to happen or when it could happen or why it could happen, and it just seems like we should be you know, that should be a contingency that we should be concerned about. Do you have any comments on that? Uh, I don't necessarily have a, a direct, I mean, yes, there's a detailed rate review that either party can call for, you know, at any time, or there might be a, like a three-year window on it. Um, as far as you can't do one every year, but, you know, every third year, I'm, I'm trying to recall the specific, the specific uh, language in the contract. Um, so, so you could call for a detailed rate review, um, and that's essentially if either if either party believe that uh, um, a detailed rate review is necessary, uh, which is clearly a discussion that we can have at some point, um, then we could call for that. And essentially, um, you would bring in a, a forensic accountant, and they would they would you know look through their books and and uh, look at their you know and provide that information. So. Um, a lot of that, unfortunately, a lot of that is apps is actually uh, confidential. Um, while the city would gain access to that, it's not necessarily a public document. Um, that's per the contract. Um, I don't know the legalities of that, but but either side can call for that. We've uh, and the only thing I can say at this point is we have had no indication from Ecology, who we meet with regularly, um, that they that they have a desire to do that. Um, typically, you would do that detailed rate review. Um, you know, as, as an annual, you know, they typically can adjust around the 3% mark. Um, and in lieu of using the CPI and the, and the, recall, and the uh, refuse index, you can call for the detailed rate review if you think, if you think things have gotten out of whack. Well, I, yeah, I just think the city council would be unhappy with us if, if they were blindsided by something that, you know, that came up where um, Recology were asking for a big um, adjustment, and we we had we had just made made uh, a, you know recommendations regarding uh, or provided advice regarding rate rate adjustments, and we hadn't you know we hadn't anticipated. What well, and it happened, you know. Right to that point, Jerry. I mean, part of it is we, you know, there's there's only so much anticipating we can do. I mean, that's why that's why for this fund we've we've recommended a reserve as part of the the study. Right, is is to account for if there are costs that we can't fully anticipate. You know, we have the reserve to adjust for that. The other aspect is, uh, regardless of a detailed rate review, if the current rates cannot support what uh, Recology ultimately asks for. They do not. They are not. They do not automatically get that. It has to go through a Prop 218 and through more analysis and those things. So, it isn't. It isn't that they can do a detailed rate review and then automatically we have to adjust our rates to account for their costs. Um, that would. That effort would go through a, another full analysis and essentially a, a cost of service analysis to account for any increases such as that. Maybe maybe a way of ask another way of asking uh, the question um, is: uh, Do we have any sense of the volatility of, of uh, waste uh, you know waste hauling contract prices uh, at this time? I know they were you know there was a period of time in the past where they were ramping up really dramatically across the board. Um, is it pretty stable now? Uh, are there other jurisdictions that are seeing, um, you know, uh, in, you know, significant increases? Um, I mean, I, I, again, I'm just looking for not wanting to be, you know, surprised and, and not having asked the question, you know. <laughs> sure. No, and, I, I, and I can respect that. I mean, we, we do have a schedule of rates with Recology. Um, they have they have indicated no desire to 
uh, do other than the refuse index for the annual cost. That can change. I mean, you know, we, we don't we don't at this point have any indication that they have any other desire to do that. Uh, you know, to your point about other jurisdictions, uh, the slide we have up there before you is, you know, eight of, of the 12 jurisdictions have raised their rates in the last six months. Um, but again, a lot of a lot of that raising of rates, you know, 1383 and and um, other other organics surrounded in you know um, issues uh, for other jurisdictions. We're ahead of the curve in that. Yeah, yeah. I understand. You, you may. Well, have but I have a question. Go ahead. It, it would seem to me that we have the complaint because they're doing less service if businesses are cutting off you know, their services, then Recology isn't having to do as much. Yeah, so we, if you, go sorry, ahead. I say, if, if you recall, we did actually see a reduction in the invoicing from Recology mm -hmm. um, that That's does right. reflect that they have a reduced level of service. Okay. The, it's, it's not a one for one because obviously the service that Recology provides is not just waste. It's right. also, you know, street sweeping and on street pile collection. Right. So we saw a reduction um, proportional to our closed commercial businesses, but it's 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 not going to match it. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, so this is Lorenzo. Just to clarify what Adrian just said, the um, the reduction in the invoice from Recology is smaller than the loss of revenue to the city for the customers that have canceled or reduced service. Is that what you meant? That is correct, yes. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> okay. Um, so kind of kind of went through that. We did look at other jurisdictions. Um, again, eight of the 12 have raised their rates since uh, June of 20. Uh, well, seven of the eight since 2020, uh, since June. Um, so during COVID, basically, they, they, uh, the majority, if you will, um, continue to raise their, their in, you know, see increases in their solid waste. And then, uh, like I said, we, we uh, again, the recommendation that we've got before you this evening is um, uh, the 10% increase is built in the budget. Uh, however, what we're looking at is if you combine the postponed June of 20, with what was planned for 21, you get a total of 18%. Um, so uh, from a modeling perspective, when we look at 12 uh, and then six um, for an 18% total over 2021, which would have been the percentage uh, raised, um, that, that provides the most assurity that um, the fund will continue to improve and, uh, and not, not go into the red, if you will. So question on just question on timing of this. Uh, uh, well, we're not, uh, we're not in discussion yet. Okay. Keep, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Stan. Keep going. Oh, no, no, that, that was, that was pretty much, I mean, that's the recommendation we have before you this evening. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Stan, is it possible to make this available to the general public? Which this presentation? The, the presentation. presentation. Yeah, yeah, it will be posted. Be of All of our presentations are posted on our um, website after the meeting. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, is this a time to invite public comment? Or do we, would people prefer to have it? At, uh, let's get there. Let's get public comment before we enter into our deliberations. So um, I'd like to open the um, the meeting up for public comment. Anybody interested in uh, weighing in on this issue? Um, please second, raise your I'm hand. There. Yep, one second, I'm getting there. Yep, thank you, Stan. I have to flip around my screens when I don't share. So. Not a problem. All right, Richard. Hey, hello, um, hey, Richard. this is Richard Welcome. McCann. Um, I was actually I had one question was is uh, I realized as a as a uh, viewer I have no idea how many other people are watching this. Is there is that kind of an interesting? You can't look around the room and see who's sitting here. Whereas I know on the other side you can actually see how many participants there are. Um, 
I, I just have one comment, which relates to actually calculating the reserve fund for this. And I, I have not looked at how it's being done here, but um, uh, I would assume that the reserve fund has to actually be just calculated solely on the city's direct expenditures and that there shouldn't be any reserve funds held for the pass through to Recology and that Recology is responsible for its own reserve funds. Um, not having seen the report, I don't know if that's how it's being calculated, but I realize that's probably one element that um, should be considered and it might even be that you have the immediate answer to that, to that uh, query. Um, but that's really all I had on this item. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Any other, uh, do we have any other um, community members who wish to speak to this issue? To Richard's point, no, we have no other, no other community, community members attending. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Richard. It's good to have someone out there. <laughs> um, so, okay, then um, not hearing that there are any other uh, members of the public who wish to speak to this issue, I'll close public comment off on this issue. Um, so discussion time. Um, perhaps we can go around and um, just everybody could just Stan, ask a could question. Stan, could Stan answer Richard's question? Oh, he did. No, I, no. Well, I answered his question about the attendees. Yes, but oh, but right. Not the, not Blaine, the, are, you, are you asking about the reserve? Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. So, so the reserve is calculated. Uh, it is um, fifteen percent of our annual operating costs. Uh, not including our contracted cost. So, so that is so. To, to Richard's point, it's correct. We do not. We do not. The reserve does not include any of Recology's um, reserves that they may hold. Um, you know, on their side. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. But I would. But I would also comment is we we haven't been able to build a reserve. We're not building a reserve because our revenue still does not match our expenditures. So, to that. To, also to that point is we don't have a reserve to tap into as of yet, if you will. Right. Right. Okay. So open for discussion. Yeah, I think Olaf had his hand up. Olaf, I can't see. I, I can't yes, see. I did. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you. Yeah, Thank I had you, um, a couple of questions on attachment two to this. Uh, so when we look at the actuals for 2020 and 19, 2020, and I just did a couple of comparisons for doing, um, if you look at the total for, as I look at the total income in that one going up, I'm sorry, that's the total income. So, okay, I should look at the, at the bottom instead, but my questions really are regarding the increases. So as I look at the expenditures, I see um, the, the um, cost or the total wastewater, subtotal solid waste program for 2019, 2020, total between 2020 and 2022 goes from 12.1 million to 12.4 million, a very small increase. Um, so that seems to be super duper stable. Uh, however, when I look at the, uh, the top of this, there is a pretty significant change in the overhead and in the, that subtotal for streets. And I was wondering if you can comment on that, because as, as I look over those two years, if I look two years forward, I see that the city overhead goes up by an average of 10% a year. And I see that the street portion of this goes up by an average of 30% a year. And I think it's related to the street sweeping services by, by, by um, Recology for the for the second one, but if you could maybe uh, have some, I don't know, if you can comment on what's happening with the overhead and why, and perhaps also on that, what seems to be happening on the street side. For the overhead, um, that one is, you know, part of it, so the city just released a um, RFP for a cost allocation study. And um, we, because we need to complete a, a new cost allocation study. And once that is done, we will be able to have a much better idea about those overhead costs and how they're divided up by the departments. 
Um, right now, we have some question marks that we've discussed. I think the last time this came up, this was also a point of discussion. Um, and so we're, um, we're hoping that with that cost allocation study, when that's completed, we'll be able to have very clear answers um, about where that overhead is and, and what's being charged. So we don't know at this moment why it's increasing by 10% a year? We, or whether it's increasing by 10% a year? Right. Um, I mean, we we know that there are there are things that are being added. Um, there are contracts that are being added in the budget that aren't always spent. So, for example, the CMO has a account line item that they put in the budget, but they don't spend. Um, and those are the things that we are looking at that cost allocation study to get a, a more clear answer on. And yeah, and I would I would echo that as we we. You know, some of those that that's the point of the cost allocation study is to make sure that the methodology used to account for those costs is is um, uh, just like with the cost of service studies that we perform is appropriate for the um, services being delivered for that for that utility. So, um, so these because these the, the reason why this is important, right? If you if these were to follow what the rest of the program is doing, which has about a one percent increase a year. Whereas if you add these two items in, it's 5.6% per year. Um, so it makes a difference. So that's, that's why I'm kind of asking because it, it helps understand staff recommend, or I would hope that it helps understand the justification for, for the increases that, we're, that, that staff's making recommendations on. Right, from, a, from a, the street sweeping perspective, while it's budgeted at 774, the the 450 or a little higher than that 480 that you see that is that is somewhat of the typical budget uh, that is expended year over year. Um, however, we have budgeted higher um, for addi additional special assignment street sweeping if needed for storms, uh, additional activities such as that. So it's more of an emergency measure. So you're you're we don't anticipate that we're on a yearly basis gonna spend that 770, but that's what's allocated on a budgetary perspective so that we have those funds available. So if we have to do additional street sweeping um, due to um, emergency factors, we have that ability to do so. But those funds those funds essentially would, would roll over and go back into fund balance prior to the next year. Okay, all right, thanks. Uh -huh. Lorenzo, any questions? Um, <clears throat> no, thank you. None at this point. And Elaine, anything that comes Yeah, um, Stan, can you go back to the slide that showed the rate increases for the five years? Yeah, there. Um, what you're proposing is an 18% increase in one year, right? Correct? That is correct. Okay. And then 5% and 5%. Correct. And that is the total amount that was approved with that um, Prop 218 that we did in February of right. 2019. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to ask a question. Instead of doing that, would it be possible to do a little rate smoothing here and put maybe two more percent in January 2022 and January 2023 so we could lower the 12 percent to eight percent? You know, just trying to smooth out the the drastic increase. Is that possible or is that a problem? Sure, that is a problem. Um, and, and part of the reason, as we've said a few times with this particular issue, we need to recover the expenditures from the revenues. Right now we're overspending and, and um, under sort of our revenues aren't covering that. Um, and in order to make that happen, we have to have those higher rate increases at the beginning, and then we can afford to have lower increases moving forward. So because of the, the circumstances with this particular fund, 
we really do need to have those higher increases now um, so that later on, we don't have to continue to have high increases. So to Elaine's point, um, I'm just looking at a couple of things. One is, you know, the number of delinquent accounts that we have. Uh, I'm just, to what degree do they impact our costs? Are those students who just leave and will never get that back? Is that an annual thing that happens? How much do we recover? I don't know. And let me start with that question first. So as, as we, as kind of we pointed out in the slide, most of the, from, from a utility perspective for solid waste, um, the majority of the revenue we're seeing, not from a delinquent account per se, but from the, the revenue reduction is commercial oriented. Um, from a delinquent account, um, you know, that's across the board. And, you know, based on the information we have, it's not, um, it's not, a, it's not any, it's not drastically different from what we normally see from a delinquency perspective. So we, we lose, if I'm not mistaken, it looked like how much a year in delinquent accounts? Uh, we, uh, on it, we don't lose per se, but on any, any given year, I, I forget the number, but it's around, uh, I thought it was somewhat around a thousand, it might not be, I, I don't want to throw a number out. I don't have it right in front of me. So the way that we had the delinquency calculated was by month. Um, and those are the counts that are delinquent by the month, and they it, it varies. Um, I believe with what we had in the consent calendar, it was three hundred thousand um, dollars, two hundred to three hundred thousand um, dollars for the month that are accounts that are in delinquency. I see. Um, okay. But they're not; those aren't accounts that don't pay. There's there's only one account that has um, outstanding balance that has lasted for more than a year. Um, the rest of the accounts do pay and they would, the um, finance department does have a payment plan that they offer. Um, and, and they are reaching out, like we said, in the consent item to those, those folks that aren't paying. The reason why we're seeing a higher level of delinquent account or the higher amount of delinquency with a lower level of accounts is that for this particular circumstance, we are seeing people who aren't paying for multiple months. Right. So um, that's why it's a higher amount or partially why it's a higher amount for this, this period and this time. But from what we've seen with the utilities, only the solid waste utility is actually seeing a drop in revenue. The other utilities are still pretty stable. Okay. So um, that's why we're thinking that it's mostly the commercial accounts that's causing that drop. So I, I'm, thank you for answering that question. It helps me frame the next question I have, which is, so it appears that a COVID vaccine is imminent and whatever that means, uh, but it, it's looking like the general public will be available for, there'll be vaccines available to the general public by the middle of the year. Is there a, um, would there be any reason to move to just flip January and July, or would, would that create a, a hole, a big enough hole to worry about um, in the reserve fund if it weren't implemented in this in this specific order? So this specific order is particular to being able to prevent the fund going into the negative. Right. Um, if we, because if you see in the uh, RSAF report that we have. We had modeled 10%, the, the original plan of 10% um, right, in we under, January, yeah. yeah. And it still went negative. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if we were to flip it, that would exacerbate that concern even more. And, right. and like I was saying to Elaine, you know, part of it is we knew we were going to have to have significant increases in the beginning of this um, rate adjustment for this utility. Um, we initially, if you recall, I think R3 had 21% or something as the, um, the first year um, recommendation. Yes. So um, that was for, you know, restoring the expenditures and the balance of the expenditures and the revenue, and then also being able to begin the process of developing a reserve for this fund. And, and that's another high priority um, because just like you pointed out, we have some unknowns related to, you know, rate, um, detail rate requests if they come in from ecology or you know the impacts of SB 1383 as they come online. 
right. as we have to implement, right? Um, we are lucky that we're ahead of the game in that we have mandatory organics recycling and that takes us you know, a, a long way there, but not all the way. So we, we do you know, want to make sure that we are balancing those expenditures and that revenue and developing that reserve to be able to smooth future um, you know, uh, increases that might be necessary. Um, but at some point, we're, we're going to have to say it, it needs to be a high um, increase. Mm -hmm. OK. Thank you. I have one follow up on that. This is Lorenzo. Um, just kind of going back to Elaine's idea of smoothing the rate increases. Um, um, earlier on, you mentioned the potential need to actually borrow. And I'm wondering, would it make sense to perhaps borrow on a, say, a one-year basis from another fund to, uh, to cover uh, a smoothing of the rate increases, as Elaine suggested, to go 12, 6, 7, 7, or something like that, um, and, and in that way, uh, maintain our reserve fund with a short-term loan? So we, we did have a loan um, that was already granted to this utility uh, as you know we discussed the the three million dollar loan back in 2017 i believe um and that it, i mean we, we we can't pay that loan so getting another one might be a problematic yes yeah, staff staff would not recommend an additional loan uh at this time and i'm not sure um obviously we'd have to have a discussion if 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 um, that ultimately is the recommendation that that the UC puts forth, obviously we would have to talk with the finance director to see if she would even be supportive of that action. She is certainly well aware of the fund, uh, the status of this fund, um, and um, I I would hesitate to think that she would be supportive of a, an additional loan uh, given the state uh, of the revenues versus expenditures currently. Uh, I have another question. Um, this isn't going to hit residents too hard, the single family residents, because it's what, $7.29 a month. What about commercial? That's a different story, isn't it? There are um, a wide, wide variety of customer accounts for commercial in terms of the cost. So that's one of the reasons why we we not use that as a as an example because it's very hard to compare across, um, and that would depend on what level of trash service they have and if they have you know additional um, GR bins or or anything. Um, so we can we can go back and see you know for maybe our our largest type of commercial customer what that might look like, um, but it's 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 a it's an increase. It's it's not a, a, a small increase, but I don't know that it would be, um, you know, it, sorry, I don't know that it would be on the level of, of maybe stormwater changes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you think your, your feeling is, is that it wouldn't, wouldn't cause a, a business to go out of business or something like that? We can certainly go back and look and see what that might look like, um, but I, I would be very surprised if uh, an increase like this in um, a solid waste fee would be something that would cause a business to go out of business. Okay. This is Olaf, I have a comment if I may. Yes, please. Um, so I guess a, a couple of things here. I. I recognize that that staff would not recommend, you know, um, a lower increase or something that might not cover the funds. Um, but I'm also hearing that it's possible to do that. And, you know, I also understand, you know, the, the fin finance folks at the city may not think that's a great idea to do an additional loan. I just want to emphasize for us, that's not, that doesn't mean a 12% increase is necessarily a good idea. So I'm very much with Elaine when it comes to being concerned about this being high. And, you know, when we talk about whether it, it's, it's a significant hit or it, it's not a significant hit, 
it, it's like death by a, by a, you know, a hundred little needles or something, or something. I forget what the exp expression is, a but it's, 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 it's right. It's <laughs> right. Um, and, 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 uh, you know, you, you keep adding it up, right? It's like, you know, a, a, a tax increase that you pay on, on your income tax. It's no big deal. It's not going to change anything, but if you start doing that a lot, it has a very dampening effect on on uh, on both business and household activities. I'm very concerned about a 12% hike, um, even if me personally, I have no problem affording this, but it's pretty dramatic, I think. So if we can come up with some way of smoothing this over, and, and I, I like Elaine's suggestion, I would even go further and probably say six and six, and then see how we do that going forward, because we will have an economic recovery you know, in the second half of, of 2021 that is starting to to pick up a little bit. And I think it would be feel like an easier time to to do increases at that time. So that's my comments on this. Uh, this is Lorenzo again. Another question. Do we know uh, what is the proportion of renters uh, who pay the city utility bills as compared to uh, landlords paying them? I, I don't have that specific information. All of the utility bills go to the owner of the property. Um, so whether or not they pass that on to the renter directly or not, um, that's a, a good question that I, I do not have an answer. But the owner is, is always the recipient of the bill, yeah? Correct, the, the owner is the one that's directly responsible for the utility bill. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you build it into your, into your rental agreements if that's what you want to do, or you just include it as your cost of, of your rent. Unlike your PG&E bill, which could be actually taken over by the renter. Correct. Yeah. Lorenzo, just a small comment. I can't believe you say PG&E bill. Didn't you mean VCE bill? <laughs> <laughs> no, the bill comes from PG&E. It does, that's correct. <laughs> That's right. VCE is just a line item on your PG&E bill. That's right. That is true. I noticed that the other day. Um, any other comments? Well, questions or comments? <laughs> questions, comments, all the above. Well, and, and actually up to uh, all of comment that is uh, becoming a contentious issue in the state. This is a digression, but you may be interested to know that the law does not allow community choice aggregators to do their own metering and billing. And that's a severe handicap because it's very difficult for them to get the data. So there are parties working on now trying to change the law to, uh, to enable them to do their own or to require the utilities to provide the billing data to them more promptly. Right. Thank you, Lorenzo. If we could, if we could, if we could stay on topic, that'd be good. <laughs> that may be a, that may be a suggestion for a long range item. Is what? Yeah, I there we go. I like that. All off. We started it. Yeah. Okay. Let's get back on. Let's if, do it. If I may, okay. if I may, just add, you know, one observation. Um, if, if we were staying flat moving forward, uh, you know, some of these discussions, I think would be would make a lot more sense. Um, what we're saying and what we've said in the reports is with SB 1383, we're going to have increases outside of what we would normally see from each, you know, from year to year. And, and granted that the initial um, implementation is, Jan is January 1, 2022, with final implementation, I believe in January 2032. So we do have a, a time. Um, some of those requirements uh, that require, you know, more staffing potentially or, um, you know, more reporting different kinds of software, that's going to be sooner rather than later. So that, that is something that given that we know this fund has issues, we've, we had the discussion, um, you know, last year, knowing that there was going to be significant increases needed here. And, and we have this new statewide regulation that's going to you know, cause this um, fund to have to support more. Um, I, would, I would definitely think about that in, in looking at the, um, the recommendations that we have and the recommendations that you would like to make. It looks like Matt Williams has joined us. 
Oh, good. Welcome, Matt. Matt, we can't hear you. you Got to take a, take yourself off mute. Sorry about that. I I had a family disruption that uh, had to be taken care of. I should have sent you a text. You all okay? Yep. Uh, fine. Um, more more smoke than fire. Good. Good news. So we are just to give you reference. We moved the item around. Your item got moved to uh, um, slot B, and we are now the first item that we're dealing with. Obviously, is um, our um, solid waste annual fund review and recommendations. Um, recap basically is the case being made by staff right now. The importance of the, as you can see on the screen. The 12% January and the, and the additional 6% uh, July rate for an 18% increase in our in the first year, um, moving out to five and five. Um, with people wondering if they're Elaine proposing um, that is there another way to smooth this out? potentially moving this down to, uh, Elaine, I think you said what, six and six, and then moving a couple of points into the other outstanding years, correct? Well, January, 2022 would be 7%, January, 2023 would be 7%, and then the 12% would only be uh, 8%. 8%, yeah. The, and then the challenge on that was that it would not, it would still put the fund in, by doing that, we put the fund into a negative, um, uh, negative status. Notion was to, and I'm, please join me if I get this wrong, the possibility of loaning money, getting another loan to um, to balance the account. Um, and staff saying basically that that would be uh, a bit of a challenge at this point. Um, and does that sort of summarize it without going into too much detail? I would, I would say that encapsulated kind of the discussion we've had to date. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's so we're still in questions and comments. And um, I don't know if you have any pre questions that you've written down that perhaps we've gone over already, but I uh, would invite you, Matt, to bring any up if you had any immediately that you would want to add. Well, at the risk of, of giving a preview to the next item, one of the things I think we should be doing when we look at these sorts of specific issues within an individual utility and an individual fund is to see how they look in the context of the entire utility bill. Um, so m right now we have, according to my information, we have significant amounts of um, reserve in both water and wastewater above what the target is. How much it is, is, is subject to some discussion. But I really think that we, we can and should be looking at, at, and this applies to stormwater as well, we should be looking at how do we make these uh, individual funds as, <laughs> as possible. Um, Whoa, whoa, whoa. As what is possible? As fiscally helpful, health, healthy as possible. Possible, okay. And, and what, what you'll see with the model is it allows us to say, okay, if we, we could even put in negative increases in, in any of the individual funds, but if we hold, say, for the example, water at zero for a number of years, we end up being able to fix or balance the, uh, the, the fact that the water rates have been higher than they needed to be and waste solid waste and stormwater were, were, had some catch up to do. But in the end, the balancing works out that, that the, the run rate ends up being the same. So my feeling is, is that I, we should make the decision and, and I defer to Stan and to, uh, um, to the, the, the rate consultant, tell us what it is that it need, is needed to be fiscally responsible, and then let's look at it holistically in the larger picture. So as, as uh, 
to Matt's point, as <laughs> to follow up on that, as as Adrian has has uh, essentially indicated in the modeling and and uh, with the percentage that we've adjusted, um, what's before you is what we believe is to be the most fiscally prudent for the fund. Um, this keeps it in the positive, um, based on all planned revenue and planned expenditures, uh, and so that that is why staff is recommending a twelve and a six versus the original uh, 10 and eight um, from June and January. So let me, let me ask something on that, if I may, because um, this, uh, man, I, I think it's helpful to point, point that out, what you just did. But as I recall looking at, again, I'm not gonna go in, I hope, into the next agenda item, but one of the things that is helpful in, in, in looking at those lists is that we have an average increase of, I think it was four points, one or 4.2 percent over the last 10 years and we're also looking at the same level of increase uh, in the future uh, as we go into the next three years I think it was so question for for, for uh, maybe Stan or, or Adrian is that with this 12 percent increase and with the six percent increase that we're seeing and the, and the subsequent increases are we staying within those four percent that that would be a that, that would be an, an item for the, the information that, that Matt has put together. Um, we have not. Okay. In that, well, in, in that case, I would maybe uh, move that we postpone a recommendation until we've had that discussion here, because I would like to hear and understand that until we make a decision to support or not support staff's recommendation for a 12% increase. Um, Olaf, let me let me give you some some thoughts based on on what I've seen in in the spreadsheet that each of you I gave you the actual spreadsheet so nobody has everybody can play with it. Um, but the answer to your question about the four percent is, if I understand and Stan, please correct me if I say anything that's wrong. We we have gotten to the point with water where we have, we have made all the capital investments and we are not anticipating any, um, any extraordinary capital expenses any more than the natural amount that's built into the, the water rates. The same thing is true with <coughs> wastewater. And this, what, what my understanding is of this rate increase is that it puts us in a position where we could move forward in say January 2024 with a standard two to three percent CPI increase and and have the fund the, the utility and the fund be healthy. One one caveat to that and Stan will have to answer that is this is that we do have the interfund loan and the way that the interfund loan has been handled is that the wastewater fund isn't going to be paid back any of the principal in the, the coming years. They're only going to be paid the interest and that at the end of an amortization period, which is yet to be determined, um, that the principal will be paid back. So um, my, my answer to you, Olaf, is that ideally we will be going down below 4%. That's been the historical but we'll get closer to what the run rate was before we got to the extraordinary capital uh, maintenance and improvement uh, expenses that we had in all four of the, uh, of the utilities in recent years. Is that as clear as mud? No, no, that's clear, Matt. I think that was very well presented. Yeah, no, that's helpful, thank you. <laughs> so, other comments or questions? If no one else, I will speak, but I'd like to hear what anyone else has to say if they have something to say before me. Go ahead, Elaine. Okay. Um, wait, wait a minute. Jerry, did you have a question? I'm sorry. No, I didn't, I didn't have a question. I just want to, um, I'm, I've been thinking about a motion, assuming that we could um, come to some agreement on this, this schedule of, of percentage increases. Um, and, you know, what, going back to my original comment, I, I would, 
I would like us, if we can, when we do have a motion to provide some assurance to the city council that we will be uh, checking back in on some of these contingencies that I mentioned periodically, say, for example, you know, maybe mid-year next or something like that, you know, just to, just to, just to let them know that, well, I, and, I, and I'm speaking for myself, I don't see things as quite as predictable as they used to be. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of reasons, and I, I think that that's part of our job uh, to, you know, to do that, you know, not <laughs> to do that, just, you know, what, what is changing, what, what, what did we not know um, a year ago or six months ago that we, that is now a big factor, you know, I'd like to be able to provide that assurance that that's 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 my only concern. Jerry, I'll, I'll follow up on that too. Um, with the with COVID, it makes it even more unpredictable. So, yeah. hopefully, we're going to get a vaccine soon. But how do we know? We don't know, and we don't know what the business climate is going to be. So, there's a lot of imponderables, and I absolutely agree with you. I think we need check-ins, like once every six months on these things because they're just, it, everything is so volatile right now. It feels One of the other things that Stan and I spent a, a, a very productive call on last week was that um, every one of these rates is, is, is a projected amount. If we find that, that the, the situation is better than it is, the council has the discretion just as they have in essence done with the, because of COVID with what we're seeing on the left versus the right to reduce those rates. They can increase them, but they can reduce them. And that, that mandates even more check-in. Let's, let's be sure that we, we are watching this closely as we go along. Right. I would, I would to, to those points, I would comment um, just that we have been uh, I won't say every month, but we have been providing information to the commission on yep. events that are that are unfolding. Uh, and then I also, we do have the annual fund updates, which the process or the format of is actually in your packet this evening, um, which also convey a lot of that information. Um, obviously, as staff, if we see trends changing that we feel needs to be brought to your attention um, because it impacts materially what we want to recommend moving forward, Absolutely, we're going to be in front of you, no doubt. Um, so I just want to give you that assurance that we're 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 not um, we're not going to uh, uh, you know keep that information off to the side and and uh, not convey it to you. Certainly, we want to keep you apprised because it it absolutely is material to um, what this commission is discussing across all the utilities, right? So uh, I just want to provide that assurance, no doubt. Okay, great. Do you mind if we include that in the motion, though? That um, well, we, we haven't done a motion. motion yet, Jerry. <laughs> no, no, I, I know, but I, I'm just trying to trying to make sure that um, that wasn't a um, pushback on the idea of having a check-in. Yeah, well, I actually I think that's a good idea, Jerry, to put it in the motion because that lets City Council know that what we plan to do or what staff plans to do for us, whatever, so that they're they're clued in that we're looking at this every six months. Right. Yeah. You, you might I might suggest uh, for clarity, you might make two motions, but that's obviously the commission's discretion. Um, but for, for clarity it might it might be easier that way. Yeah, I agree. Does anyone else have anything to say before I say something? Go ahead. Please say something. Okay. Um, I hate to say this, but I'm going to say I told you so. <laughs> I warned about this very thing when we decided to, when the commission decided to put off the rates, I voted against it because I knew this is what was going to happen. Um, you know, the, the the chickens come home or roosters come home to roost, whatever, <laughs> <laughs> whatever the expression is. Um, you know, it's, it, it's, I don't like the idea 
I don't like the idea of, of increasing it by 18% in one year, but, but, and the big but is also, I don't want the utility to go into the negative and have to borrow money, which means it's going to cost that much more. And we're going to have to raise rates that much more to cover that cost. I mean, it's at some point you've got to fish or cut bait. Um, the other comment I would have also is the state loves to give these unfunded mandates. They love to pass these wonderful things. They sound good, but they cost and they cost a lot. We went through this when we saw the water project. It was this huge cost. We saw this with the wastewater treatment plant. There's not, not much we can do about it because the state says we have to do it. But it is, it is troubling at times that the state passes these mandates and then no funding with it. So uh, having said that, I'm going to make a motion that we um, approve the rates that are recommended by staff. I hate to do it. I, I, I really do. I'm really, ah, but I think it's, it's you've got to bite the bullet and just do it. I'll second that motion. So it's been moved and seconded by Matt. Um, discussion. Olaf. Yeah, so um, thank you for that motion. That's great. Um, I would agree with your last statement, Elaine, which is, ah, <laughs> this is, I don't think that's awesome, actually. And I, I don't think we need to do that. I do still do think that COVID is a very real thing and it's affecting us just like it is affected us, us in June. We did not, I, certainly I did not see this coming as being something that would be with us for a long time, uh, even though I might have expected it good to go until the end of the year. But at the time we had this discussion, you know, way back in, when was that, April, May, um, we did not, at least I did not expect this to continue throughout next year. And it looks like it will. In fact, we're in the middle of something that we thought we were over, which is like a ginormous second wave coming right now. This continues to be the wrong message. Um, and, um, you know, as it being as such, I, I do think it's important for us to, to, um, to, um, reduce that blow. And I would pro propose and make a substitute motion um, for this. And where I would say that we, instead of approving the staff recommendation, we um, instead uh, support have a motion where we would do six plus 6% next year, just to take a number. I'm not sure if that's the exactly the right number, but since we have numbers and we're looking at them, I'm making it up as we go here. And that we, in the following years to come after 2021, have rate increases to adjust us back to a balance that, that by either 2022 or 2023 gets us to a point where we're caught up. See, that would in be other words, 9% and 9%? No. I'm not sure exactly what, what that would be. No, um, would, yeah, 9% and 9%. Well. Well, my question is, is there, is there a rush to do this? Stan? A rush to do what? To, 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 <laughs> to make the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the rates, the rate change. So every, virtually every month that we do not increase the rates, we go further in the hole. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. That's why, if you recall, back before COVID, the first two years were aggressive simply to recover the stability of the fund, which has not changed. That need has not changed. If you change, uh, such as Olaf is suggesting, um, we won't recover the fund by January of 23 because it, it compounds, right? So what you're looking at then is the January or the July of 24, uh, you, you know, it's just going to basically, uh, well, one, we would have to take, certainly have to take out loans if you, if, if council approved that um, uh, suggestion. And then two is the, the outer years certainly are going to see larger increases because again, we're still going to have to recover. <laughs> so 
So that, and I'm not, I'm not saying that to change anybody's mind. I'm just providing that's, that's the information of what would occur if we do six, six, and then, and then add that additional six to make it eight and eight on the backside there, which would then, that would give you the full percentage allotted for the five years, um, but it does not uh, sustain the fund um, right. as currently modeled. No need to apologize. You answered my question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Olaf, I, I, I applaud the, the spirit and principle of your motion I'm going to vote against it because I think there's other ways to accomplish what you're looking to do in the context of, of all four funds. And I think it's a mistake to try and do it with this single fund. So I'm, I'm going to vote no on your substitute motion. We so before we debate it, can I just suggest that if there is no second, then there is no discussion. So um, my point. Yeah. maybe that's something we could do and then maybe it dies right here. Is there a second for Olaf's motion? Okay, oh, hearing none. So we are back to the original motion. Yeah. Was it comment? Um, it's staff's recommendation. You're just moving staff's recommendation. There was a there was a notion also that we could include something else as a comment in that recommendation or a second. We're going to make a second recommendation after this, correct? That's yeah, right. we're going to do a second. I would okay. I I would prefer to have a friend a friendly amendment in this recommendation so that I can in this current motion so that I can vote for it. Okay, uh, I will accept a friendly amendment that there's a. Uh, Six months check in. Um, that, that would be the friendly amendment. Yeah. 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 I'm, no. I'm okay with that. I, I'm Matter okay. You? I'm okay with it, but I have a friendly amendment to the friendly amendment. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not, not just one in six months, but each six months. Okay. Yeah. Every Except, six months. Accepted. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, actually, in this particular motion, because we have such a huge increase, I think it's worth saying for sure. And, and, and there are some outstanding questions which were brought out uh, around the allocation, um, the um, administrative costs allocated across the, uh, the different departments, which we're not sure of at this point. If I may clarify one question on the motion. Sure. Uh, Currently I have, uh, the motion is to approve the rates recommended by staff with fund updates every six months. Perfect. Do you want to say every six months until 2023, which is when this current Prop 218 would be completed? No, every six months. Moving forward. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, we, we would have the those annual fund updates anyway. So, yeah, or, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna gently push back a little bit on that premise in that we are doing <laughs> annual fund updates, which are actually not um, simple to produce. To do so on a six month basis for ongoing for uh, ever, if you will, with no uh, end frame. I'm certainly understand the need in the near term, um, but I would I would gently push back that an annual fund, all things being equal, an annual fund update is sufficient. <laughs> has been sufficient um, to provide you with the information um, to, to understand the health of the fund. Could I suggest an alternate wording that might help? Uh, you have, you know, thanks for mentioning that Stan, you know, the annual fund up, update and, you know, has a specific meaning. Uh, what, I, uh, what I was proposing really was what I would call a contingency check-in um, I see a lot of contingency that we need to keep our eyes on. I don't know that we need to have a full-fledged uh, uh, fund update every six months, but I would really like to see a, a check-in on contingencies, um, if that's okay, if that's, if that's clear enough. No, that, that's helpful, Jerry, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. that that's perfect. I, I didn't expect really a whole big thing it's more just a check-in to see if we're on track and if if things have drastically changed or not 
as as long as the commission is comfortable that what we bring in six months will be a condensed um simpler version of of the annual then uh, i'm i'm okay with that right okay. right so uh, as the seconder i'm okay with that too okay can you read read the motion now one more time so what I have based on the discussion that we just had is the motion is to approve the rates recommended by staff with contingency contingency check-ins every six months. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. okay. Any other discussion? Call a question. All in favor of the motion as proposed. Uh, I think you ought to have a um, probably need to do a roll, 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 call. roll call. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thank I was planning to do that. Don't, don't thank you for the suggestion, Elaine. Um, but yep, we're ready to go. Let's. Jerry Braun. Hi. Olaf Bistrom. No. Lorenzo Christoph. Yes. Elaine Roberts Musser. Yes. Myself, Jan Trost. Yes. Matt Williams. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Olaf, relating back to your uh, original question about in the minutes capturing the other side of this, do we want to make sure that whatever comment you have uh, gets captured in this uh, in this vote? I'm sure that's going to be captured. Uh, what I will uh, let everybody know is I'll I'll take an extra look at that. So. If, if uh, Adrian, if you have notes on that, um, I'll be happy to take a look at it as soon as you have them. Otherwise, I'll look at it when you when you have them. Out. Hey, if, if you would like me to, because this is the first time we would be doing this, um, I'm happy to prepare that for you and, and reach out and check in with you to make sure that it's what we talked about. And then okay. that will be what goes to the commission for their review in the minutes. All right. That sounds perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we're back to item 6A. Um, Discussion of historical utility bill, uh, Matt. Okay, let me get. Um, and Matt, can you stick to fifteen minutes? We're a little bit off schedule, um, but I'm wondering if that will help. Can you do that? Uh, I I hope I can get it done in ten. You're good. Thank you, sir. Okay, so I need to screen share. All right, so continue. Choose this. All right, so this is item 6A, the discussion. Uh oh, wait a second. How do we get to where this the damn? Oh, there's PowerPoint. All right. Uh, screen sharing. All right, bear with me. And show. All right. Uh, I can't run the, run the thing. Okay. Now I'll screen share. You can't run a PowerPoint while you're screen sharing. All right. So the triggering event for this was uh, was in July. The request from the commission that staff provide historical utility bill data. Staff has been extremely responsive. They've provided average bills in August, September, October, and, and, and this time. And without having been asked for it, they also provided in October a 10-year table that showed the trending of the average bills. Not, uh, it, you, had to, you had to do some calculations from the trending, and that's why I ended up creating a spreadsheet to try and see how the trending varied from, um, from utility to utility. I went out and got some, it created that in a spreadsheet, and then I got some additional data. Although the numbers aren't exactly the same as the ones that Stan has reported in the, in the um, the rate studies have reported it's close enough annual revenues by utility from the comprehensive annual financial reports. I use that also because that was in, those were numbers that any citizen can get access to because they're on the city website. CAFR doesn't have fund balance, year-end fund balances, so I got those from the annual budget documents. There's this, 
they, they, we don't end up with a final budget on the, that website, but the variances are really not that important. So I created a, a spreadsheet that could be used to model to see the picture of all the utilities together and be able to say, does it make sense to balance these rates to try and make it so that all of the utilities are in the same good, robust, um, resilient uh, financial picture? Why rate balancing? Well, what we had was we had very well balanced rates right up through January of 2013, because fundamentally they were the rates were covering O and M. But in oops, let me slide this down. In the period from 2013 through 2020, and with the case of stormwater, it will go past 2020. We've had an addition of large capital project costs. And what that has meant is that on a running rate basis, compounded yearly rate, the 2.44% per year has jumped up to 4.13% per year. Um, really, when I look at it, not that bad, given the hundreds of millions of dollars that we spent on water and wastewater and the substantial amount of money that we have uh, had to, to put into solid waste. So what one of the things I wanted to see was the impact of rate balancing and to have an easy inclusion of rate alternatives and be able to model the impacts of the rate alternatives. So what we're now at is the question point and I'm going to stop my sharing and I'm gonna open up the Excel spreadsheet and again, my purpose here is not to get into the detail, but, all, but to, to expose the, uh, the, to give a brief exposure to how the spreadsheet works. And since each of you can use it yourself, if you have follow-up questions, reach out to me. So moving from top to bottom, I have the data that Stan provided. I wanted to see what the percentage rate <laughs> were and down here is what, what were the historical fund balances? Plus what were committed uh, increases in the rates due to prior POP 218s? We took that out to the current period, 2020. And then the numbers that you see in here for 2021 and 2022 and 2023 were approximations. They were me saying, okay, if I were doing this, I would keep water size. What happens if I hold water at zero all the way through? What happens if the, the sum of <laughs> 9, 19, and 331 is the 1030 that's been recommended by Jerry Bradshaw for uh, wastewater, uh, no, for stormwater, and uh, we have 0% increase in here for solid waste. What you see is that, and what's calculated out here is the, the run rate. If you compare in 2019, what was the, the rate for, uh, or actually 2020, what was the rate at that compounded rate? It was 156.10. And what is it in actuality? It's 156.14. If we do the increases at the rate that we say plus the one for 1310, it does temporarily jump up to 168.70, which is an 8% increase. It would have been 162.54, but we're for one year, $6 a month more. Um, and what you, you would see that in 2022, it comes down and by 2023, it's back down to that four point one, two percent run rate. So it creates a bump, which we come back to the historical rate. And as I said in the, the last item to Olaf, if we get to that point, what, what we are at is a place where we're no longer looking at large capital. We, we have funded all the large capital improvements and we're going to see rates go after that at a, a rate at a, at a run rate that's lower than the, the historical 4.12. So 
that's that's how the model was put together. Um, I, you may have questions or you may say, I want to play with it and I've got Matt's phone number and we can do Zoom call, we can do it on the phone, whatever works. But it's a tool for each of us to ask the questions that are important. Impressions, questions. We have a few minutes left. So um, if I may, I start. Um, Matt, thank you so much for putting this together. I think this is awesomely useful uh, and it really does help to, to gain an understanding of what the total impact is, which really to me, that's the question. What is the total impact? So this is super helpful. What I particularly like in what you said just now is what assumptions did you put into the, to the future numbers here? So now I understand better how to, how to use it. So appreciate it and thanks for doing it. Yeah, great work, Matt. If I can make and Adrian, thanks for supplying the data. Adrian, yes, let's give the credit where the credit is due. No Good. doubt. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, but one quite one. Uh, I'll just make one uh, statement to the to the spreadsheet, which I echoed with Matt um, when we had the discussion. Uh, what I what I wanted what what I caution everyone to do is th this is not a situation where you balance um, one utility against another. Okay, that's not what this is showing. Um, we are not, uh, as staff, certainly going to recommend that you don't uh, maintain the health of one fund because you have to bring another fund back to health, right? So the utilities of, of themselves are individual cost of service studies, and that's how we look at them. But what this spreadsheet does show and provides, as Olaf mentioned, an excellent point is the ebbs and flows of the different increases across the different utilities, right? So um, it shows that over time, the, the total bill um, sees on average, you, you know, your four, two to four percent. Um, but during periods of need, one or other utilities may need to see larger increases on their individual ones. So I just want to make that clear. Um, and Matt and I discussed that when, when we were talking about it as well. But I agree with Olaf. I think it, it is a, a very useful tool uh, to, to garner, you know, what is the overall impact that you're looking at? And let me build on what Stan just said. The fact that I've held water at zero is not a recommendation that we hold water at zero. Just as we, at point, Stan pointed out to me, and Stan, you get as much credit as Adrian. Uh, you, you've been extremely helpful in this. When, when we were dealing with wastewater, even though the rate that did not increase any one of the years over the five years, there was some class of service balancing that was done that made sense for the, the rates to, to do a new Prop 218. The other thing is, is that even if zero makes sense in, in the information that we have, the point that, that Elaine made in the prior uh, item that in the time of COVID, we need to maintain flexibility. We may very well end up saying, recommending to council that 2022 and 2023 both be 2%, knowing that they, with, with our six month check-ins, we're going to be in a situation where we can recommend to them that the 2% the for this one immediate year is not necessary and they could if they so choose, choose to waive that 2% increase, but that we need to maintain, we, we should maintain the flexibility to have some kind of increase um, at least able to be done, so. And that's, that's the cautionary point of looking forward in the model here is you don't wanna make assumptions about what a utility is gonna necessarily need until we, we have that data in front of us. So yeah. um, that's the cautionary point about um, the assumptions made going out into future years, unless we have approved Prop 218s, which obviously then you can plug in and, and, and understand, so. Yep. Any other questions? Matt, thanks for the work that you did on this. Um, I think it is a useful tool. Um, we appreciate the fiscal fairness you bring to our commission um, and the extra time you put into developing um, work like this for us. Thank you very much. Let's move on. If there's no other questions about this, can we move on to item 6C? 
Yep, and no public comment on that. Item. No, I'm sorry. Thank you. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. Yep. So item six C. I, I went out and I looked. I just saw one person out there. I don't. I think it's one of the staff from the other uh, is. From our consulting is. organization. That's correct. correct. And that way, saw it there. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Good. Okay. Moving on to water cost of services study fund balance discussion. Yeah, so so I, I put together some, you know, based on the discussion last month, I uh, I put together some information um, on on, you know, the again, kind of the essence between what the rates are and, and what they aren't. Um, and from that perspective, uh, as the information in front of you is presented from a water fund perspective, uh, which is what we were talking about. Um, during that time and during this time. If, if you look at figure one of the staff report, and I apologize, I don't have it up on the screen, um, but, but in essence, the revenues, yes, we have a large, uh, we have a, a fund balance that, that does exceed the target uh, reserve fund balance. Um, but from a perspective of the health of the utility, typically, and what you're looking for is that the rates and the, the revenue you derive from the rates are somewhat matching your expenditures. Uh, and the table that's in the staff report, um, uh, you know, based on planned revenue and planned expenditures are estimated that um, our revenues are essentially matching uh, within, within a, um, a you know, certain percentage are matching our uh, expenditures, planned expenditures over the next five years. Um, so from that perspective, um, you know, we, we would say the, the fund is in balance um, or the, the utilities in balance, if you will. Um, obviously, through the SRF loans and some other, um, um, you know, essentially one-time revenue in, uh, enhancements, if you will, we do have um, a fund balance that exceeds the reserve target. Um, so obviously, that's a discussion um, and, and certainly a, a valid discussion. Um, primarily with the FBC uh, as to what what potentials we have there, but obviously the UC is going to provide uh, some of that input as well. Um, I did in that in that memo as well show an example where we chose not to increase wastewater over the past five years, um, and and basically we're using fund balance as if you will revenue to balance the fund. Um, the end result is that yes, we've drawn down the wastewater fund. Um, and at this point uh, in the graph, you see a little bump back up in, in essentially the, the fund balance. However, that's primarily due to we shifted off some CIPs to a future year um, due to COVID. So the, the cautionary tale in that is if we don't have at least those 2% CPIs, uh, which we have envisioned for the maximums of the last three years of this five-year period, um, the idea is that um, potentially we don't have those if we see expenditures or we um, uh, that um, exceed revenues or revenues drop uh, to below expenditures, it could put us in a situation where the future increases are larger than CPI, which is not obviously not our goal. Uh, as Matt mentioned earlier, um, you know we've we've increased the rates. Uh, primarily, largely due to these large CIP investments that we had to do both for water and wastewater. Um, to his point, beyond what we have planned in our existing CIP as part of the cost of service studies, you know, we do not envision um, these obviously 80 million, 100 million dollar um, investments for the next 30 years um, when we, we have to go and rebuild the plant again, if you will. So um, I, I just provided the wastewater one as a, as a somewhat of an example of when we chose not to recommend any increases. Um, so uh, obviously the fund balance is a discussion, um, but from, from my perspective, and I, I provided options that you could do, you know, as, as a couple potentials, um, certainly we wanna have a discussion around that, um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, recommend using that as a reason not to um, propose to um, provide for general CPI increases to make sure that revenue matches expenditures, uh, you know, within a certain percentage moving forward. Um, I'm happy to take questions on that particular vein. Um, I do have something else that I want to talk to uh, from a water cost of service perspective with uh, the commission um, related to the cost of service study and what we potentially could do 
uh, which speaks back to um, which speaks back to the idea about you know we just recommended a 12 percent increase on one utility um, obviously this utility here we we have at least the first two years not recommending an increase uh, within the model um, my suggestion uh, and uh, open for discussion within the commission this evening uh, is staff is essentially proposing at this point that we shelve uh, the cost of service study for water. Um, we know we're in good shape for at least the next two years. Um, our idea is, uh, and which Matt actually alluded to last month as well, we basically put this cost of service study on the shelf. Um, we understand that we are not increasing water uh, at least for the next two years. And as we do the annual fund updates, um, we would not recommend uh, going through this Prop 218 until such a time as we see that we need to um, look to increase the rates um, by that CPI or adjust. So um, that's something I'd like to, to throw out there to the commission and see if there's any thoughts around that. Um, obviously, staff feels uh, at this time it's appropriate. We're far enough in that we understand our, our costs and we understand um, uh, you know, the need of the utility and that we're, we're in good shape. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there for discussion as well this evening. Question. And what are the years in figure one? Oh, I, I believe uh, the, the, the first year I believe is, is uh, this fiscal year. Okay. Fiscal year that just started this July. I, well, it might be last fiscal year. I apologize. It might be attachment one. Hang on one second. It is. It's attachment one. So the first year, one is the the full year we just completed. Yeah. Adrian, say that again. The first year is the fiscal year we just completed. So 2019-20. Oh, right. okay. And the reason, the reason you see that large number there, uh, let me get back to it, is we paid off the iBank loan. That's why it's $12 million of net revenue lost because we paid off um, eight and a half million of, of a debt that year. And based on the numbers that I put into the spreadsheet, there's also $8 million of capital improvement. Now, it may have been adjusted because of the, the CI for the COVID adjustments, but that was the amount that was, it was projected in there. Right. And it doesn't change over the two years. We still plan on, on expending the funds. We just did, wanted to make sure that the fund, like with all of our utilities, we wanted to make sure we were in, uh, um, we, we wanted to see what the impact of the COVID would be on revenue before we move forward with some of the CIP work. So, so happy to, I, I know that was a long, <laughs> apologize. Once I get talking, I can't stop. But um, um, so I'm happy to take questions. Um, again, I want to reiterate that the fund balance is a discussion uh, moving forward, um, but from a cost of service study and rate perspective, uh, staff is recommending that um, the commission consider shelving this study uh, and we will continue to provide the updates as we've um, done in the past. And once we get to a point where we're looking into the future a year or two and we understand we might have a need for a, a modest rate increase, that we would then um, prepare and, and go forth with the Prop 218 at that time. What that does, uh, obviously that sends a signal that we're not looking to just uh, increase rates to increase rates. Uh, it is also something we can point to from a whole uh, utility bill perspective to say, uh, it's, it's we don't even have approval um, at this point to increase rates. So you can plug those zeros in, in the model that uh, Matt put together and, and be assured that that's accurate. Two, two things. One is that um, in when, when we did the Prop 218 five years ago, the recommendation from Bartle Wells for rate stabilization was 20% of variable revenues, annual variable revenues. Uh, what we have in this 17736, 458 is only 10%. I think that in, in agreeing on a target that it's much more prudent to, uh, to, to use the same Bartle Wells recommendation that we had five years ago on that rate stabilization. 
it's it it doesn't change the rates the rates are going to be the same but i think that it's a more realistic uh picture of a robust and resilient uh, reserve uh, that's consistent with uh, a 7921 rate rate structure when and if that goes forward um, that was that was one thing the other thing is is that the spreadsheet i showed you was the simple version of the spreadsheet there is a more complex one in which i modeled through the expenses and revenues that uh, were in uh, the Bartle Wells cost a service study, and I'm able to, if we stick to those expenses, to able to say, here's what the uh, the the fund balance would be uh, in 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 a number of different scenarios, and in every single one of the scenarios, the fund balance maintained itself at the numbers that are that are projected. Those numbers could be different because of COVID, and we have to think of those. But it's 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 pretty robust, and I'll be more than willing to share the more more extensive spreadsheet with anyone who wants it. Matt, would you send that one off to me if you haven't already? Sure. Thank Thanks. I haven't. Any other questions about? Yes, I have one. Um... Actually, I was going to ask Stan a question, but I think I need to ask Matt a question first. Um, are, Matt, I, you referred to a uh, rate stabilization target um, that was that was recommended five years ago, and it's my understanding that we have a reserve target. And are you suggesting that we? scrap the reserve target that we have and go back to something that was recommended sometime in the past? No, um, and, and this is something I wrestled through and I, I'm not uh, wedded to any one solution. Uh, water, because of the nature of the rates, has much more revenue volatility than uh, any of the other funds. and. The, I, I went back to the recommendation that came from Elaine and Richard, and, and I think you were also part of it, the, uh, the fund balance subcommittee. And that's why you see that graphic on the right side of the spreadsheet. I think that that works in all of the, in all of the utilities, the, the three utilities, uh, stormwater, sod, wastewater, and, and sanitation. I think because they don't have that kind of revenue volatility, can't, conservation can't erode to the, to the tune of 20%. And by the way, 20% is lower than what the state, what the governor mandated when those things came out. So it, I think that, that an additional category for water only of rate stabilization to deal with the conservation issues should be added to the other three. And I, for my purpose is put it in at the 20% that is well documented in the Prop 218 materials from five years ago. So you know, just to be clear, um, we last year, well, maybe this year, I'm, I'm not sure. Very recently, we finally um, made a recommendation on the reserve targets and and I, it does sound like you were saying that we should revisit that that um, that recommendation for water only. Okay, so so you are you are recommending that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted to ask uh, Stan a question. Um, you know, I I read th in reading through your um, your your staff uh, recommendation. Uh, or analysis, um, you made a, a, a case to uh, leave the um, you know, leave the fund balance well above the uh, target, the the target that is currently the target. Um, I actually think that you know it would be also helpful to. You know, think about for for you to help us think about 
what are the other options and what are the pros and cons of the other options? I know, and I understand that you favor one option, but I don't think there's been an analysis of the other options. So I guess, is that a fair request uh, from your point of view, Stan? Yeah, Jerry, certainly. And, and that's, that's kind of what I was speaking to a little bit ago is that, you know, what we can do with that fund balance that exceeds the current reserve target um, is, is absolutely a valid discussion to have. What, so, so yes, it's, it's, it's a, something to follow up on and certainly have a discussion, have an analysis of what options there are. You know, I, I threw two out there, obviously paying down debt uh, is, you know, if possible is, is a, uh, you know, an option that, that seems, seems self-evident that we would, and we've done that when we, we are able to, right? It, it obviously promotes the health of the fund long-term when you can remove debt. Um, um, but yes, we need to look at that. But also what I was saying was that, that is not the UC's primary role. The FBC uh, would, would kind of look at that because it, it speaks to interest rates, cost of funds, cost of money, you know, those types of things. So I'm not, I'm not saying the UC wouldn't be involved, but we, we probably would start the discussion with the UC to, to gather some, somewhat of a question bank, if you will. And then we would, we would go to the FBC and say, you know, we have X, we want to have your input on, on, you know, here's things we've thought of. Do you have other options uh, that you might think that would benefit the city um, in this, in this individual utility? So I, it, that's a long way of saying, I agree with you that yes, it's a good discussion point. <laughs> Dan, you said, you said two things, paying down debt. What was the second thing? I think the second one I put in there was the, the idea is we could, we could, uh, you know, if we had some one-time capital costs, we could potentially allocate some, some reserve funds to that. Uh, what that does is that does relieve pressure on having to increase rates in the future. Um, you know, if, if, as I indicated, the revenue and the expen planned expenditures are kind of in balance, if we had uh, some CIP that we could um, pay for as a one-time expenditure with those additional funds, it would lessen the need for, for future potential increases to keep that revenue in balance with the expenditures. Um, that's just two options. I'm sure there are plenty of, the, of, of others out there. Um, and that's the part of the discussion and analysis I think we have as a follow-up um, um, in the future. Or not, and I don't mean in the future like years from now, I mean, let's talk about it and let's uh, you know talk about it here and then talk about it with the FBC and then hopefully, we have some solutions that might benefit the city for sure. Yeah. You know, does, does it, has anybody been tracking um, Biden's plan for infrastructure investment? And I'm would, so, any, sorry, of the again, would, talk, would <laughs> any of the things we're talking about fall into that? I, I apologize. I didn't hear the full question. I'm sorry. Would, Al. Is anybody tracking Biden's plan for infrastructure investment nationwide and were the things and if so are any of the things we're talking about do they fall into that into potential funding from that federal source well we're we're aware of some of the plans both from the current administration that uh, obviously didn't happen um, uh -huh. you know i i personally have not looked at uh what has been you know put out there uh, moving forward okay. the only thing i will say to that is um, you know, if, if a lot of these things and infrastructure plans are rolled out as grant opportunities, um, the focus primarily from a government entity such as the state or the federal area is always on disadvantaged communities first, uh, which we are not. Um, so the, it's frequently the case for us that a lot of the grant opportunities, and I'm not saying this is, you're making a valid point. We need to understand that. Uh, certainly, our team tracks those type of activities once um, once they're out there and and being discussed at the state level or federal level. But um, if it's if it's infrastructure as as a grant uh, opportunity, we are I want to say really low on the list from a priority perspective when it comes to those types of things. Okay. Uh, I, I was reading some stuff about how all communities have been f affected so um, from neglect for so long that uh, it, it looked like there might be a more even dis 
well, it wouldn't be even, but uh, it, there'd be more communities that could benefit from those dollars from what sure. I've been seeing. And, but and, we don't need to talk about it now. I, it was just a general question and we can track it. Yeah, and we do, and we do, the, to answer your question, again, I'm getting long-winded. To answer your question, yes, we track those activities. Uh, that one's, I'm not aware of that one specifically, but we have team members that are kept, keep apprised of the opportunities that we might be seeing coming down the road for all of our utilities. If I find something out from Garamendi's office, which you yeah. probably do also, uh, I'll just let you know, and it's probably something you've already discovered, but I'll keep you apprised of that, and I'll also mm -hmm. send it to the commission. As always, any information you have, we're welcome to, uh, yeah. to uh, take a look at, no doubt. Okay, thanks. Any other questions or comments on this item? Uh, Stan? <laughs> Would it be helpful to look at what the wastewater uh, fund did? You know, you had that huge excess and then you ended up spending it down. Would it be helpful to know exactly where that money went? So where the, what was done five years ago for the wastewater and what was planned, uh, and that's why we, we chose to go to council saying no increases. All we did the 218 for was to reapportion costs amongst the, the because we had a new plant that treated the wastewater differently. So it was a pretty significant change in user class allocation. Um, the plan was to use that money to fund the capital improvement program, not as a one-time expenditure, but as the ongoing need of the capital program. So it's a slight difference from what I'm suggesting potentially for water in that revenues did not meet expenditures in that, in that utility. And that was by design for the last five years. Uh, and what, what I'm suggesting is that potentially what that means is when we look in, when we look at the wastewater cost of the service study, which is starting, apologize, which is starting next month, we, we may find out that that may not have been the best solution and maybe a better solution would have been having the opportunity to have those 2% increases as CPIs at some point in that five years, right? Just to make sure that the revenues are beginning to match the expenditures so that when we get to the end, we're not having to see that catch up, if you will. And I'm not suggesting we are, but you know, that's just a cautionary tale that I wanted to present here. So. There's one other um, it, it factor that, that we don't talk about. There is, in essence, the, the fund balance for wastewater is understated by $5 million because the wastewater fund has loaned Two million and three million dollars to sanitation and and stormwater, so at some point in time that money is going to come back. The interest rate that is being paid uh, by those other funds to uh, wastewater is a better interest rate than we would be getting out on the marketplace. Not substantially better, but somewhat better. So. Um, that's that, that's part of the erosion, Elaine. Uh, there's five million dollars that came out from those fund transfers. That that is true. That was a uh, some significant, you know, basically two million a shot, you know, and three million a shot going out to the other funds. So true. Thank you, Jerry. You had you had your you were wanted to say something. Oh um, yeah, I just wanted uh, to go back to the 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 point about options and and you know what a, you know we. Uh, Stan mentioned a couple of options. If I understand Matt correctly, uh, a third option would be to uh, revisit the target, and uh, and perhaps uh, that would be that that would be one use of the of the difference in in between the current target and the and the balance. Is that is that a, is that correct? Would that does that make sense? I don't think I don't think you'd be. Uh, there isn't the, the need for rate stabilization in wastewater the way there is in water. No, no, no. I'm talking about water. Talking about water. That's the topic yeah. that we're on right now. Yeah, that, you know, re revisiting. <laughs> well, while I like the fact that we have a policy approved by council for the, um, for the reserve targets across the utilities, um, absolutely, if, um, if a Matt or others or the commission uh, felt that we needed to adjust the water one uh, due to the variability of the revenue uh, because it's primarily, um, you know, a variable rate, um, you know, that, yes, that's an option, uh, short answer. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Lorenzo, um, Olaf, any comments you want to weigh in? 
Yeah, I I have one comment. Um, this is Olaf. Um, I wanted to go back to what Stan uh, mentioned initially here. Um, sort of the idea of, of foregoing the, the, the water uh, cost of service for a couple of years. Um, I think that's a good idea. So I, I, want, I don't want that to be lost in here. Um, I think that's exactly the kind of flexibility that we need as we look at this and see what do we need right now? And if we don't need it, let's not do it. Uh, let's do it at the point when we do need it. So that's my comment. Good. Yeah, I'd like to follow up on that too. Well, I want to just check yeah. in with Lorenzo, if I could just one one second. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, no, go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I just I just wanted to follow up on that that statement, Stan. How much our money would we be saving by not, by putting off the cost of service study? Uh, you know, that's I, it's a good question. I haven't looked. Um, you know, in general, the cost of service studies are around you know eighty to one hundred. Uh, I don't know what we spent um, with the consultant to date. I apologize, um, but we'd probably, you know, if 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 you say we probably have, you know, twenty k left on the agreement or thirty k left on the agreement, that would theoretically be money we wouldn't have to worry about spending at this point. Um, so it's it's not. Let's put it this way: from a utility perspective, it's not significant, but it, it would be some savings. Yes, absolutely. And Ab Abigail's on the line <laughs> listening in. So uh, she's she's hearing that and uh, maybe cringing a little bit. <laughs> although although Bartles and Wells is doing our wastewater study. So um, I was gonna say, we do still have the wastewater study uh, coming up um, probably right. starting soon. So yep. they will, so they will actually, continue to meet with us. Yeah. Yep. So, so from a workload perspective uh, and Olaf, I appreciate the, the, the comment. From a workload perspective as well, this makes a lot of sense, quite honestly, from staff's perspective. Um, we certainly would, putting something on the shelf um, and not having to expend more effort on that <laughs> from our perspective as well. Right, and, and the other thing too, that may, maybe just, it's not, I don't see it that just, you know, saving money right now, it's also getting better data. Like if you don't need this information yeah. right now and because you, you know you're not gonna do anything about it, you will have better information in a couple of years, right? It just makes sense to have a fresher study by the time you're going to need it to me. Correct, correct. And 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 to that to that point, um, we're at a point now with this one is, you know, we, we don't have, to, we may not have to do a full study in a couple of years, right? We may have the ability to do most of it in-house, frankly. Um, we have that capacity. Adrian's quite honestly fantastic and she'll hit me in the morning or whatever, but she is great uh, with these models and, and providing that information. So, um, you know, there's also that potential for savings down the road as well. Um, uh, totally. Adrian, there goes your Sunday coffee break. I know you work Saturday and Sundays from what I can see. So that coffee break on Sundays out, I can see it. I was to say, what, what Sunday coffee break? What are you talking about? <laughs> anyway, any other comments on this? We, I want to try and keep us back on track if we can here. We're good. Okay. I, I would I, I would appreciate though if if the commission as a whole, I don't know that I need a formal recommendation, but if the commission as a whole is comfortable with shelving the cost of service study, um, it would be nice to have that consensus for the minutes so that we can, you know, have so if, if council asks where is it at or or whatnot, I can I can say we've discussed it and agreed that it's it's a good idea. So Having said that, um, just for the record, then, uh, is, does anyone disagree with the notion of shelving the cost of uh, study for um, at this point in time? I thought Lorenzo wanted to say something. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see his hand. I can't no, I didn't raise my hand. I'm, I'm, I'm listening and, and I go along with you all. It sounds fine to me. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Elaine. I missed it. I totally support it, but I do have one caveat, Stan. Um, in, in doing the research on, on what happens after a Prop 218 reaches the year after its five years, um, one of the things that was very clear was that legally 0%, just keeping the same rate was very, uh, was totally supported by the law. The other alternative that is available and supported by the law is if there is a very clear language in the rates that says you, you have an allowable CPI 
that you can go up no more than that and not have to do a prop to a new prop prop 218. We never anticipated that when we were doing these any any of these prop 218s. That language may be in and may be fully compliant with the language of the law, but I think that it's something that it would be good to have the city attorney or an or appropriate uh, utility rate lawyer uh, give us the right the, the right language so that we have the flexibility to either go zero percent or somewhere between zero percent and what the CPI is and have that as our standard policy on all of our rates. Yeah, I would, I, Matt, Matt, I, I, I don't know that I, my understanding, I don't know that I agree with, with that. Uh, uh, certainly in stormwater, that's, that's where we're going. Uh, and that goes to a general vote. But um, since we have a bit of a differing opinion, absolutely, I will reach out to our legal team and, and endeavor to have that um, answered. Um, so that we have that information for future for future cost of service studies, no doubt. So, and we may find that the language in the existing rates gives us that flexibility. And, and yeah, no, I, it's a it's a great point. I certainly will will reach out and chat with our legal team on that question, no doubt. Thank you. So, I want to get back to the original question that was asked, which staff asked if we would be willing to make a statement about, um, you know, that we can shelve the. Um, uh, cost of service for water, the study for cost of service for water. So I want to just, again, bring us back to, is that something that we can all support? And can we put that as noted that we all support that in the minutes? Um, I think it should, it should have a motion. Stan, my motion would be that the Utilities Commission recommends that the current co water cost of service be suspended uh, until at least such and such a date. What date would you like to put into that stand? I, I wouldn't actually put a date. Uh, what I would suggest is if you're making a motion is that you, you, know, you, you, you base the, the future next need for a cost of service study based on the annual updates that staff provides to the commission, something to that effect. That reinforces the other thing that we talked about too, which is good. Yeah, that, makes, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So Adrian, can you do some knitting and purling and put those two things together? So what I currently have is the Utilities Commission recommends that the current water cost of service study be suspended until annual updates indicate a rate adjustment is necessary. Perfect. 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 Okay. Any other discussion? We need a oh, second. Minute, we gotta have a second for the, do we second, second the yeah. motion? I'll second, second it. Motion? Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. I didn't hear that. Okay. And I, I will say there's no no uh, no public comment. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Well, the call a question. Can we have, uh, is this one we can just do by, is anybody uh, opposed to the recommendation? Hearing none, it's unanimous uh, support for the recommendation. So passed. Right. Sounds great. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Uh, so let's go on to, I believe we are at. Oh. Re uh, review of the fund update process. Correct. Yeah. And if you would like, I can go ahead and run us through this one. Thank you, Adrian. Go for it. Sure. So um, in your packet, you received the um, summary of sort of our current process for the overall rate reviews and included information in regards to our annual fund update. And it included uh, the format that we normally provide with those fund updates and descriptions of sort of each section. Um, so I'll go down the sections that we would normally provide. Please uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, with the annual fund review, we would start with sources of funds. And that of course is any revenue the utility receives from ratepayers or other fees. And that information is detailed out um, and then combined with the information from the budget and from the model if we have one. So there would be a comparison of the expectations sort of versus the reality. We would also have our uses of funds, which would be any expenditures associated with that fund, which is you know, labor and overhead, operations and maintenance, capital improvement, debt, all of that expenditures, they would be you know, divided up for that fiscal year um, and then compare it again to the model or the budget. 
We also include the fund balance as a separate discussion, um, showing the fund balance as the, at the end of the fiscal year. And the fund balance, if we have a Prop 218 um, and a model associated with that fund, we would also show the projections of the fund balance based on that Prop 218. We would have a summary then, which would be the current fund status, which is sort of our staff analysis of where the fund is at, any trends that we're noticing, any uh, abnormalities that we would be seeing, we would highlight in that, that current fund status section. The next piece would be the projections and the rate adjustment recommendations. Um, we have been moving closer or we've been moving towards having these annual fund reviews also be associated with rate recommendations for council and knowing that we could move forward and say council maybe don't go as high as you were originally scheduled. Um, maybe it's lower, maybe it's nothing. That information would be included in this section of the report um, for staff to demonstrate different scenarios that might be possible with the fund based on the numbers that we're seeing. And then we would have current events which would be calling out anything that we know is on the horizon or that we anticipate is going to have an impact on the fund or something that has occurred unexpectedly and impacts the fund. Great example of that, COVID-19. Um, you know, all of our fund updates probably for the next few years are going to have a discussion about the impacts of COVID-19, you know, on those funds within this, this review. Then we would include the staff recommendations on the rate adjustments, which would include the scenarios if there are scenarios to compare. And then we would have our next steps, which is basically just the sort of schedule of, of what would be the next steps for presenting the item to council um, and any additional timing. We're gonna start a Proposition 218 based on the recommendations within this, or we will suspend the cost of service study based on these recommendations, et cetera, et cetera. So for the most part, that's in, that encapsulates what we have in the fund update. Uh, as I said in the report, this is a relatively new process and a new tool that we are providing to the commission. And each time we go through this fund update, we get very helpful feedback and ways to improve what we're providing. And we incorporate that feedback into the fund updates that we're giving. At the last meeting, there was a request to kind of look at it comprehensively and see if we might be able to do some adjustments. Um, and that's why we're here with this outline for you guys tonight. Uh, the only thing that I would add in addition to the discussion is keeping in mind that the fund update is not a full study. So it is a snapshot of the last fiscal year and then sort of the current fiscal budget and pot potentially projections in future years if we have that data. Um, it's not meant to be, you know, a fully comprehensive review um, of the, the full cost of service. And with that, I will stop talking. Questions? Comments? I'll have some comments. I don't have any questions. Uh, Adrian, where in the process are we supposed to give our opinions about, um, oh gosh, what was it, what we asked the last time? Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure. There's, there's a reason we gave, you're giving this update process and you said the reason was? We discussed it in October that there was a, a request to see sort of the full fund update templates to be able to provide feedback. I don't know that there was a particular thing that jumped out as, um, you know, we need to make sure this is included because if it was, I, I would have had that in the minutes and we would be including that. I think it was more of a sort of comprehensive discussion of what are we presenting with these fund updates? What staff's um, interpretation of, of how we should be presenting these updates, making sure that that matches what the commission is expecting to see. I, I do think I, I think, and, and Adrian's spot on with, with what the discussion was about. I think what you might be referring to, Elaine, was when, um, and I believe Olaf brought up the main point of when we talked about expenditures and, and, um, you From know, this meeting, yes. Correct. Well, well, actually, yeah. So, 
so from that perspective of maybe uh, understanding a little more detail around planned expenditures moving forward, um, mm -hmm. I think was the general um, flavor. And that's why we wanted to say, you know, we, we provide a lot of that as part of the annual update. It, it had to do with, we missed, uh, we missed discussing something. Yeah. Last that, and, that was, and that was, and that was the specific expenditures from the beginning because the expenditures are part of the financial plan. So when we present the financial plan for any cost of service study, that's when the expenditures, you know, we, we, we present those to say, here's our planned expenditures. And if you have questions about those, let's talk about them. Um, and as part of the fund update, we have some of that. It's not the same as Adrian pointed out, it's a snapshot uh, and a look a little ahead. It's not the same as a full cost of service analysis, but that would be an opportunity then to look at some of our expenditures and say, okay, I noticed your expenditures have gone up. What was the reason for that? They went down. What was the reason for that? That type of thing. Yeah, and so where is that in this process? That would be in the uses of funds section, which is all of the expenditure expenditures associated with the fund. So that would be the operations and maintenance, the capital, the debt, um, you know, any CIP, which I said, yeah. Okay, so all I would say then is just make sure you alert us because uh, we kind of let it slip by before. And by the time we got to the rates, we hadn't really, we were talking about the expenditures, but we should have talked about it long ago. So yeah. if we could get a reminder from you just to say, you know, look, remember you need to talk about expenditures. And if you have any questions on them, now is the time to raise the questions. Well, and, yeah, and to that point, you know, if there are significant variances from what was planned in the model versus what it actually is, it, we should as staff be presenting that material to show, to show you here are the differences and why, right? So that's that's completely appropriate, no doubt. Yeah. Okay. And I apologize to everybody for saying no doubt like 800 times this meeting. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Any other, uh, Matt, you said uh, any other questions before we go on? Hold on, then we'll get the time. Thing is, in addition to what Elaine just talked about, Olaf brought up a, uh, a point that we weren't able to get into in the last one. And that, that is, what, where has the, each utility um, achieved efficiencies that, that are, are bringing down the cost? And I think that it's not just backward looking of our our expenses went up, or our expenses went down, and why did they? But being forward-looking as to where, where, here are some of the initiatives that we have underway that are looking to reduce expenditures, um, and here's our target, and then be able to report on progress toward having achieved that. So that was something that Olaf brought up at the the last the meeting, and and I completely concurred with. So that's that's an aspect. Thanks, Matt. You've got a better memory than I do. <laughs> um, I, Adrian, this is a great structure. There, yeah. there are things that are going on with, uh, with the, uh, the, the, um, the Chief Financial Officer and the Finance and Budget Commission uh, working in concert with the City Manager and Council where the structure of, uh, of the way that we're, we're going to be reporting uh, and, and accounting for um, dollar revenues, expenses, and fund balances is, is going to change from the way it is. Right now, it's kind of like a, a bouillabaisse. Uh, you know, it's, it's all mixed in there. And it, it, you really can't look at operations and standard recurring operations and maintenance and say, here are, the, here are the funds that we know we're gonna get every year, here are the expenses that we know we're going to incur every year, uh, if you will report on the same store basis and keep that separate from either one time or limited duration sources of funds and, and uses of funds. So one of the things I would encourage you to do is to get in touch with Elena and make sure that this is 
uh, reflecting that new structure, I'd be glad to to help with that in in, in if if necessary. But it, I think it can be done internally. And and since we're starting this from scratch, in essence, or let let's have it be consistent with the new way going forward. Um, that means that we'll end up with, as we really actually have now, we'll have multiple different fund balances. We're going to have a standard operations and maintenance fund balance, and we're going to have a capital improvement fund balance. Um, so I think those are things that need to be done. In terms of the fund balance, I think that there needs to be a, a, a gross fund balance and a net fund balance. So in the case of where we have right now, the, uh, the gross uh, fund balance for wastewater would be some number and you would show other extraordinary things that are assets that are not liquid, such as the interfund loans. In the case of, of wastewater, it would be five to a million dollars extra, and the net would actually be a, a number that's five million dollars higher than the gross. In the case of, of uh, sanitation and, and stormwater, they would show here's our gross, and we actually owe those additional monies. And so here's the net. So I think those are things that that ought to be in the regular reporting that we're doing. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Um, that, I think that is helpful. Um, which bring, brings me to another question. Um, first of all, are, does anybody else have any comments on this item? Just a quick one. Uh, Adrian, where would efficiencies come in? What step? Likely they would be discussed within the context of the expenditures. So that would yep. be the uses of funds because that would be where we would discuss any um, alterations to the expenditures based on new technologies or um, you know a different procedure, things like that. Okay. Yep. Cool. Thanks for your work on that, Adrian. It's really a um, very uh, impressive model. It would be fun to see how it works. And I know you're always open to feedback. Um, but uh, thank you for uh, some proactive work on putting that together. Really appreciate it. Uh, I just so um, commission and staff communications. If we're done with uh, D, we're good. Moving on. Okay. Um, any uh, comments that people want to make between commission staff? Uh, no. Long range calendar. I, I have a comment on long range calendar. This is Lorenzo. Please. Yeah. Um, I, I'd like to schedule a conversation about SB 1383. Yep. I think we need, uh, I understand that Michael Bish has a proposal for the Yolo Food Bank. There may be other proposals out there. I think um, it is in the scope of our commission to uh, begin early and start looking at what the options are and uh, what it means in terms of City of Davis utilities. So maybe January, uh, but sooner the better, in my opinion. I agree. Um, and especially now that the regulations have been formally adopted, we know for sure what the the um, programs are going to have to look like. Mm -hmm. And uh, like we've said, we we've brought we've been working and hopefully we'll very soon have a consultant that will um, provide us with an implementation plan that will come to this commission and to the Natural Resources Commission for um, planned implementation very soon. Cool. So the answer is yes, uh, Lorenzo. <laughs> we, we will. So we'll put it on, can we put it on agenda then for, for January? Is that what we're hearing, right? Yeah, I, th I think tentatively we do it in January. Obviously, we would request that, you know, if, if it makes sense that January versus February, depending on what the consultant, um, we, we obviously would request a little flexibility there. But, but let's put it on January just as a placeholder for sure. And then if we're prepared. And I think we could we could be educated on the legislation and yeah, the requirements you. even before the consultant has an implementation plan. Absolutely correct. And we may then want to provide some input that goes to the consultant. So um, I think the sooner we get educated about it and have an opportunity to talk as a commission, the better. 
I so, agree. And I think if if you look back, I'm I'm pretty sure we have provided some of those updates on the planned regulation to date. Obviously, we could take that what we've previously provided and, and button it up with the current uh, regulation and, and provide that again. That'd be okay. So um, what I'll do then, if people will accept an imperfect document, which I mentioned earlier that I put together for another reason, um, if I can send that out to everybody, I'll send that off to Adrian tonight. Okay, and maybe you can get it out to the commission. It just has links, the link to the legislation, um, various oh, reports thanks. that are out there on that. So I think it'll be helpful to, as well as, well, if you could substitute, um, Adrian, the, the document, the link to the actual completed document, approved document, that would be helpful. Or send me a link as to where that might be. Sure. Okay, then I'll, I'll yeah. complete that and then send that off to you for getting out to the, to the then, uh, so Obviously on, on our long range, we could have corrected that a little bit. The water cost of service, obviously pending, uh, you know, what we talked about tonight, those are off the table. Yep. Uh, stormwater rate rec recommendations to council, we're doing that. Um, you guys approved uh, previously, so we we, we could have uh, that that's off the table. So potentially even in December we could have that 1383 update if Adrian's team is is uh, prepared. So I don't want to put you on the spot, Adrian, but potentially in December we might be able to squeeze that in. So it's especially if it's just as as Lorenzo suggested, just an overview. You know, stuff that the consultant will give us take us to a different level, but just an overview would be really helpful. Yeah. And like I said, we, we have a lot of that information prepared already. Um, uh, so it, it may be easy to, to, to put that on the agenda for December. I will obviously discuss that with Adrian and uh, we will come to a, a decision there. So, okay. Well, Sounds we'll, good. Thank you, Lorenzo. Great sure. suggestion. Yeah. So uh, just, I have, a, I have a question or two. Um, I believe that starting very shortly, they're going to be uh, d conducting interviews for all of the, uh, the commissions to, can we have in December uh, an update on the applicants and, and, and invite them to come and participate, the applicants to come and participate in the meeting. I don't think they, there will have been a council selection by December, but I think it would be very, very useful for both the applicants and for the commission if the, if, if they, the, an invitation was given and Stan and Adrian, if you find out what the situation is with regard to applicants, you can send us a, an email update, but I think it'd be really good to do that in December. So uh, Matt, to that so, point, I had, called and spoke with Lucas earlier. He's going to check into that to see what the status is. And uh, if I hear anything, I'll make sure to send a, a notice out to all the commissioners. Okay. Where that stands. And Stan, you may know where things stand. You're in a position. No, I, the only thing I was going to say was, um, I believe um, that potentially in December, council will be making some commission appointments, which commissions I am not aware of. Um, but I do know that they have held some interviews for some commissions. They yeah. have, um, including this evening, they're holding interviews. Correct. So, so they are hot and heavy into the process. Whether it involves the UC, I am not aware. Um, but um, uh, you know, if we do find out information, certainly we can convey that to the commission. Uh, I think when I was looking at it today, potentially in December, it, it will be on council for them to uh, appoint or at least discuss some recommended appointments to some commissions. Again, whether it's UC or not, I, I don't have that information yet. Yeah, and and is it correct that people who are on the commission do not have to go for another interview, correct? Uh, that is my understanding, um, uh, although I am not involved in the process directly. So, but my understanding was if you sent in your, uh, or if the, if they could either reuse your previous application or if you sent in an updated one, um, that's my understanding, uh, but I am not directly involved in the process. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, one other question I have, Stan and Adrian, and I was thinking about, and I appreciated you, the fact that you said, one of you alluded to the fact that it was very helpful to capture some of the comments we made and how helpful it was to you. And I'm not sure if that gets called out 
in your reports to council. And the reason I bring that up is moving through this to recognize the value that commissions, whether it's ours or any other one, when we, um, when we're working at a, as a high performance team, we have those wonderful exchanges. And I'm wondering if it's helpful, if you would consider, um, if something stands out, just giving the commission some credit for uh, some of the ideas that came up that, uh, that were helpful to you. Uh, and maybe you do that and I miss it, but um, if you could move more towards that, I wonder if that would be a help for all of us. So I, I, good point. I would like to think that we, we you know, when we're in, in alignment, I would like to think we highlight that the commission did so. Um, obviously when we're in disagreement, those are highlighted because staff has a different opinion. But I think to your point, Absolutely, uh, you know, ideas and thoughts that this commission contributes to the overall mission of the city. Uh, I would agree. I, I, I see no reason, and I think it's a benefit for us to highlight that um, when we prepare staff reports. So, yeah, uh, it was just, just yeah. people feel okay with that idea. I'm fine with it. Sure. I give Adrian credit all the time. I can see giving the UC credit once in a while. How about that? <laughs> I'm looking at the city council long range calendar on, on Tuesday, December 1st. They have commission appointments on there. They also have a, a consultant agreement for SB 1383 implementation as part of the consent calendar. So the staff report that comes out for that may give us a little more insight in that. Correct, correct. Yeah, we're, we're, we're hoping that it stays on December 1st. Um, we're trying to button that up. Um, but yeah, that you're you're correct. That the staff report for that consultant agreement um, will provide some information, certainly for the commission, no doubt. Okay. Any any other items that people want if to I talk may, about? If I may, two things. Um, one, uh, in remembering Jerry's request to um, add potentially a discussion about sort of a year in review um, in December or or January, whenever makes the most sense. Um, that was something that came up tonight for the commission discussion in the long range. And the other question was um, when to hold the chair and vice chair elections. Correct. Uh, normally those are scheduled for January. I believe there was some discussion about having that election in December. Um, so those would be two things I think the commission might be able to comment on. What do people start? I think the bigger question, certainly Jerry's comment uh, or, or um, you know, certainly if the commission, I, I think that's a reasonable um, thing for the commission to look at on an annual basis, honestly. Um, the, the chair, vice chair, uh, certainly if the commission has any input on that, uh, like, like Adrian said, January is the normal, um, you know, uh, is there some thought around holding it uh, in essence one month early? Um, we certainly would appreciate any thoughts the commission might have on that. Well, my thought would be to, to have the review, I think, would actually feed into the chair, vice chair elections, or, or I don't know how to say it, but um, kind of get us oriented to, toward what, you know, what, uh, um, you know, what we're looking for in the following year, I guess. Um, or, or we could simply elect, elect a chair and vice chair to just serve over the holidays and then replace them in January. <laughs> yeah. I'm not into a long campaign season. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to me it'd be a little bit odd to select those chair and vice chair before you have the actual commission together. You know, I thought about that. The other side of that, though, is we have our, we're in an unusual position where uh, actually only three people remain. Oh, geez. And, and I, I'm, 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 I would be very surprised if, if those people that didn't, that wanted to be continue, didn't continue. I'd be very surprised. And the reason is we have two open spots. Olaf has, re, has resigned and, and, um, we uh, we are moving forward with oh and Jacques and Fazan. So there are five positions open right now, and my fear is we would bring people in and they're going to say what what we don't know anybody. Why would we vote on it? I mean, sure, and it just puts us 
I, I would prefer and suggest that, you know, what do you think about us having the elections in December? Because you all know who we all are. And whoever's going to emerge, and by the way, you know, clearly I'm not in it, but whoever is going to emerge, um, you know, I think we who, should. Who are the three that are left? You, myself, and Lorenzo. That's it? Oh, I'm sorry. Lorenzo, myself, and uh, Linda. Linda. And Linda. Oh, okay, so that's four. No, no that's you're three. Not, you, Elaine? not Elaine. Elaine is Elaine is up this year. Yeah, I'm up. Yeah, but I've 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 re-upped. Yeah, well. But, well, you, you still that's to. still you want to be re-upped, but when we're, I'm pretty sure you will be, but we're not unless we hear something in December, we won't know. I would like to propose that since we're all in, that we just schedule the the election for December. And it's conceivable that if they do what they have on the long range calendar of, of make the appointments December first. We'll know anyway. We'll know anyway. Yeah, and, and, and if people feel if that's the case, we can either move forward or, or we can postpone it. You know, it, it's okay. I, I, what I'll do is I'll just put it on agenda. If we want to pull it, we can do that, okay? Sounds good. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Thank you for all your work tonight, everyone. And I hope you all have a very healthy and safe Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone, staff included. Um, and, and thanks for your work. We this has been quite a year of recommendations and studies and um, you know all other things taken out of the equation. We've done a lot of good work and thank you for your work. I want to thank you all for putting up with my family distraction. Fortunately, it didn't screw things up at all, but uh, it could have. You were probably wondering where the hell is he? <laughs> oh, we 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 oh Matt's not here. We didn't realize that until you came in. <laughs> All right. Anyway, be well, everyone. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yep. Right. Take, care. Take care. Take care. Have a great Thanksgiving. Yep. Motion to adjourn. Oh, motion to adjourn. Second. All Good. in favor. Yes. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, hang on. I'm trying to stop share here. Here it is. Stop share. We still have an attendee. Uh-huh. Do we still have? Oh, nope. The attendee's gone now. Yeah, that was Abigail. And, and we I'm, have a custom streaming service thing that's weird. Oh, you're still recording. Stop. I'm trying to stop recording.